Boom. All right, guys. Give them a round of applause. Risky Biscuits. Hey. Hey. You guys want us to record it? For you? We basically had this all figured out. We just thought we'd be confusing for like five minutes, ten minutes, maybe even 30 minutes. <laughs> 30, maybe even 30 minutes, yeah. That's okay. I mean, you know, we got it figured out, and that's the most important part of this is that we're here mm -hmm. and we're doing it now. Um, I just let me. Oh, Wallet, do you guys mind if I just go through chat real quick? I actually, I got to embarrassingly sing, embarrassingly sing you a song. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's, 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 it's channel points. We get serenaded, you know. Well, we, chan we, we have channel points where they force me to sing a song and Saucy Chicken <laughs> Nugget. I'm not a singer. A saucy, what song do you want to hear? We'll, Let's just. We'll be the judge of that. Yeah, we'll be the judge. Of that. <laughs> exactly. This is what I got to do in front of my guests. This is how. <laughs> this is how we're gonna get acquainted. Um, let me just say hi to some people real quick. Wallace, where you been, dude? I, I missed you, man. I was actually gonna reach out and just say hi. What are you doing, man? Um, Harm girl, Harm girl, what's up? How you doing? AT, uh, ATL Harm girl. Thanks for stopping. I'm rich, in. Uh, thank you, Rain. Oh, Thank you, Raina, for dropping that flaunt. That is a new cue that we got. Our command, if you guys want to put exclamation point go, space, flaunt, you'll get, uh, you'll get uh, Dave Chappelle doing his flaunting as Prince. Uh, wh who else is in here? Oh, oh, hey, nephew, what's going on? Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, if you don't like this. Oh, oh, hey, oh, hey, nephew. What's up, man? You changed your name. I know who you are. Awesome. Thanks for coming back. Okay, Saucy, I'm, calm down, Wallace. I'll sing when I'm ready, damn it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's, there you go. Now, that's the true singer right there. <laughs> Saucy, what, what did you What did you want to hear? Or we could just, uh, because otherwise, I'm just going to start talking to our guests because, you know, people probably are here to talk uh to hear the risky biscuits and not me singing terribly, so I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, they show up just to hear me talk, uh, 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 sing like a like a like an asshole. Anyways, well, while they're figuring that all out, thank you, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. I really do appreciate. It. Thank you for hosting again. Um, well, not again, but right now. Uh, but it's uh, can you guys introduce yourselves so anybody in chat don't I'm know rich, you? Bitch. Okay, uh, to know you. This is Logan. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Yeah. He, uh, he he talks uh, out of his voice. I'm a, I'm a I'm a Southern gentleman. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I'm Justin. This is Justin. I, I get to introduce you. This is Justin. Oh yeah, I did. It and both. he is from all the places at once. Oh, uh, military. Um, no, no, just, <laughs> just, just in general. I'm just actually like just from it in the mind. You know what I mean. So basically, Logan, Logan will be telling a lot of fabrications about me this evening, <laughs> and Justin will be telling nothing but truth. And about I'll me. be telling. I will keep this. This is going to be a very serious conversation for me. And I, I, we came here to find out about us, and I think really by the end we're going to find friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, after all these years, you guys can be friends. <laughs> I think this is really what's going to tie the room together no, for us. No. <laughs> Like the rug, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. The, I, I hope that I can be that for you. I really do. I hope I can be that <laughs> You want to be the rug in I want to be the apartment. rug in your house to bring it all together. <laughs> that is the, that is the, I, that's poetry. That is that real is poetry. poetry. You guys clip it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, Biscuit's here. Yeah, Biscuit's here. Oh, hey, way. Biscuit. What's up, buddy? Oh, Biscuit. Biscuit come Good here. Come on. Say hi. Let's say hi. Let's By the way, I cool. love that you guys have a, a electronic drum set because I couldn't imagine. Biscuit, what's up, dude? It's good There's to see you. Look He's chilling. Everybody, hey. say hi to Biscuit. Yeah, the uh, electronic drum kit is the only way to go. It's funny because a lot of people will ask us, like, "Don't you guys have neighbors?" Because they hear us playing like "Rage Against the Machine" or something, and it <laughs> sounds so loud and big. But really, in the room, you can just hear us singing because everything else is just going directly, right. and there's no amplifiers or anything. So. We could be rocking it out, and it really just sounds like Logan with an acoustic guitar. In I, yeah, I always think it's so funny because I imagine people who are who are set up like um, 
a, a, a really cool band that I love is the Fantastic Plastics. Are you guys familiar? Right, right. So, like, yeah, great. Yeah. to see them, like, if you were in their basement, in their studio, why they're playing, all you'd hear is, like, an electric guitar, the clicks of a keyboard, and, like, them oh. going, oh! <laughs> Which is- if one of us goes, if you go out of the room for a while, like, while somebody, while the rest of the band's playing a song, you just hear the pads of the drums. Yeah, do 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 yeah. And Dog yeah. is such a great drummer that really in essence all you have to do is close your eyes and just imagine what it sounds like and you're there <laughs> well but or you, or you could just sign on to twitch tv and- yeah you could just sign on to our, <laughs> our page uh risky biscuit band and, yeah uh, definitely definitely please do uh our mod dropped a uh a shout out there so please go and follow these guys these guys are pretty fucking awesome you guys uh what i really like about what you guys do is uh you guys have this like really keen ability to sort of uh if someone drops a request that you don't know really you sort of do these live learns and then i i don't know if maybe maybe you did know it maybe i was confused but maybe it was a journey song like the journey song they always want you to play uh don't stop <laughs> believing now mm-hmm. me personally i i I've, i just figured you guys knew that but i i saw you guys kind of plunking it out but by the end of it you guys were just like in the full-on rocking out and like doing the <laughs> solos and shit i was like do these guys know this or what is going on here so so, so here's kind of how that goes like Certainly between all of us, we've played just a ton of songs over the years. And you, you, I remember a lot of them, and then you forget some of them. And then some of them you just know kind of in your head mm. well enough that if you're like, eh, if I had the chords in front of me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'd be able to kind of kind of hit that one. To be honest, when we were doing live shows before this, we would spend the first hour of our regular gig kind of like rehearsing in, yeah. a, in a way because there, there'd be nobody there or you know you're like you, you, uh, we played every uh sunday night at a, at a local bar here in atlanta for and four hours for four we would do a four hour set but it was we did that for like four or five years straight um you know never missed a sunday so you know uh there there was always an ability to be able to just kind of like oh we heard this song this week let's give it a shot Luckily, we're able to, you know, we have enough knowledge about music to be able to just read basic chord charts um, and pick it up for the most part. I mean, not to say that the very first time around it wasn't like, you know, the best thing ever. But Some, sometimes it was rough. Sometimes it was really rough. <laughs> so, and really you know rough. what? You know what? I would say we have like a, a 90% track record of like coming up with something decent. But even on Twitch, occasionally there's like that that one in 10 where we're like, well, that didn't go too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that um so did you guys do that as a live incarnation as well? Like did well, you Well, yeah. So when we started doing it, uh I was we kind of took over um a band who'd been playing in Atlanta for a while had a regular slot. The owner of the bar asked me if I could put together something to kind of start taking over that slot. And so I just got all my friends together and was like, "Hey guys, uh guess what? You're in a cover band now." Uh, yeah, Dog and Justin have been playing together for like 20 years. Yeah, we've been like playing that. together since the 90s. And so um, so once we got up there, we, 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 we never rehearsed. We got up there the first time. We were like, well, uh, what songs do you know? And we just started kind of playing and playing and playing. And so everything that you hear, everything that sounds like we have it put together, we never rehearsed it outside of playing it live for people. Mm-hmm. Um, Which but, like, us- but like I said, our 90% tra- track record, we do pretty good. And then the next time we play it again, and then next thing you know, we've played it 30 times. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, puts, it puts us in a position to not kind of be, we're not afraid to try those kind of things, uh, you know, whenever we are put on the spot now, because we've played, we've done stuff in front of really large cl- crowds that just like flopped, you know, just like <laughs> so hard, it flopped so so hard and too i mean you know like, a, like we, we've all just been playing together for so long that uh, uh we you know we enjoyed talking musically together so <clears throat> when we first started like justin was saying we were we didn't really know too many songs and so we're big grateful dead fans mm-hmm. um and uh just jam fans in general uh so we so we would just jam like certain songs we would just be like Dude, we, we would get to the end of a song and you would be like what was the song they were playing? Yeah. Because we had taken it somewhere else so far out of the realm. We were like, thank you. That was uh, Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it, it was like this weird reggae shit by the end. You had no clue what song we were playing. 
but it all worked out because it, it, it translated really well to Twitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when all our gigs got lost and I, and we were like, we're going to throw all in on Twitch. We're like, Oh, live learns. Oh, that's what we've been doing the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is a term. That's funny. That is a term that, uh, that I, that I learned here on this platform but that is Uh something that me and my wife did too because we would do an acoustic duo thing and we sort of got really good at just people would be like play fucking you know free bird or whatever it is and and we'd be like (laughs) all right cool Uh, a harmer girl wants you to learn every time by britney spears by the way just so you know so that'd be justin's brown i think that's (laughs) justin does the best at the spears Hey, did you have we done uh, Toxic on on stream yet? I think yeah, we've, we've done, done it once. Yeah, we've done it once or twice. We used to play that song at like at the at some of the bars. We we played at a a couple of like college esque sort of bars here in Atlanta. College esque, uh, college esque. Just a lot of college kids that would show up and, and rich kids and stuff. And uh, there would be nights where we would notice that just the the first you know four or five people deep in the crowd were really just young college women and and justin would play that britney spears toxic and the, the whole place would lose it, it would, would be something crazy i mean we would do this rock we did the local h version i don't know if you're familiar with the band local h i am yeah. i am just don't uh, get it keep your yeah. Oh, yeah. So that is, so anybody who wants to listen to the version that we do they can go look at the local h version yeah <laughs> that that's the version of toxic that we do I'm basically like screaming like Kurt Cobain on the choruses. Uh, it's not really, but I love that fucking song. What a great song! Yeah, it what is a good. good. <laughs> it is good. Such a good song. I agree. Uh, there's, there's no denying it. it was probably written by like two people sitting in a cubicle in Nashville or something yeah. like that. But, um, <laughs> no, for real, or, or like, or like twenty people, you know, like in, right, in like right. twenty yeah, different yeah. studios all over the fucking world. Everybody, everybody wrote one note. Of yeah, the song, exactly. put it together. Yeah, but it's a it's a great song. The chord progression is great. The melody is great. It's they got this whole vibe to it. I mean, anybody could do it, and it would still be a great song. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Harma Girl wants to know if you're going to end up going back to the Tin Roof after the pandemic ends and they start uh, letting people play out in the real world again pandemic end yeah <laughs> uh yeah let me know when that's coming up <laughs> i mean we do uh, we justin and i talk about it frequently but we we do miss the crowds mm-hmm. to a certain degree but yes. but to tell you that but to tell you the truth the twitch crowd has been <laughs> it has actually been the kind of crowd that we have always really wanted to have i mean we we do love the bar flies like we wish them well but we hated when the bar flies would spill drinks on our equipment or would uh you o- know occupational tip- hazards yeah yeah just or you know be dicks about tipping or you know or even just the economy of it like logan spit on a guy one time oh yeah uh, <laughs> is- uh, right in his damn face <laughs> uh southern <laughs> gentleman everybody southern- <laughs> poor k why 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 did you spit on him because he was talking shit to me, and Logan was nice and sauced. And uh, Logan was like, what'd he say? And then just went over and was like, fuck you. You know, it's kind of like just the whole thing. And then the guy was just acting. He was just some some young, entitled, rich kid. Probably, rich kid, yeah. He probably had a Make America Great hat on and shit. <laughs> and, uh, and Logan was like, ready to throw down and one of our friends knew him or something i don't know it was it was it was listen kind of, it was the thing. fact is it's like we would get hammered drunk at almost every show <laughs> people would be uh, people would be amazed that uh we would be able to go through a uh half what is it a half gallon of jameson <laughs> in a night in a night between <laughs> justin i and our keyboard player at the time yeah so. dog and uh dog and rashad don't drink so it was um, kind of which is good you want the rhythm section to be Right, they yeah. hold it down. You want them to and be then, sober, <laughs> and then we could just be like sloppy guitar playing singers, um, <laughs> you know, just martyring ourselves up on stage. <laughs> you know, you guys were touching on something there real quick. Um, you know, with that question that um, that Harmer Girl was asking, and and she also says that Justin loves Dire Straits, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, we all, everybody should love that song. If you don't love, that I, song, I don't know <laughs> that song. Oh, you, I I actually love it more than other people though. <laughs> Even even if they say they love it a lot, I know that I I just edge out a little bit on it. Yeah, well, well, you know, Harmony Girl is is kind of talking about. Uh, she was saying I can actually watch Twitch. It, it's too late on Sunday for me to go out, anyways, and and that kind of leads back to where I was going with. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you guys were sort of hinting towards the fact that like maybe the Twitch gig is a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I already feel that way. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm slowly converting. Uh, you know, there, Justin and I, uh, we were playing a lot of like solo acoustic gigs, duo mm -hmm. gigs. We would play corporate events and stuff. We were we were definitely full time musicians here in Atlanta. And um, you know, there is an ass like once again, there is a bit of an aspect that we do miss about being able to play in front of people. Uh, even we would even uh, on Saturdays, right when the pandemic kind of hit. Within like the first two weeks, we were setting up on our front porch out in front of our house to play for our neighborhood. And eventually it got to be there was like a lot of people showing up in front of it our was house. They got to be too big, actually. And it and it and it turned some people off. And we, yeah. we saw a decline in it uh, in the uh, rightfully so, which right. Yeah, <laughs> rightfully so. But but that was the whole thing is like we were still kind of in shock that we weren't be we weren't being able to play for people live because we we enjoyed it so much, but as, as time passes and we continue to keep doing Twitch, it's a, it's a thing. Like, you know, we, we actually can make the announcement this uh, on stream that w next week we're going to start a five day, five night a week regiment. So oh, damn. Yeah. So nice. let our fans know and everybody that we'll be doing five nights a week starting next week. So. Hell yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> now is, um, now, with with that five day a week thing, you know that's a lot of demand for for you know five people to get together. Are you guys going to be trying to get it all together all the time? Are you going to be doing uh, the we, duos? Yeah, I, think, and... I, I think what we're going to do is a uh, couple days full band, couple days duo, mm -hmm. and then have a day where it it could kind of be anybody, mm -hmm. whoever wants to show up on that other day. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll probably yeah we'll probably have two full band days because I think to be honest like. We we all love the full band stuff, but sometimes people just kind of want to chill with a couple of guitars mm -hmm. and some singers too. It, it it's it gives people like an option for a different vibe. Um, and, and we're learning this. If, like if they if they want to if they want, but that's how we that's how we started on Twitch because you know obviously we weren't. It took me a long time to get set up to where I could have a band in here with everybody with headphone mixes and like put that all together because this was new territory <laughs> for. Yeah. Uh, it was like I. It was just all uh, I had to guess. Like uh, maybe this will work. Uh, let's try this out. Let's try this out. Yeah. And now, it, now I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way the full band sounds. Um, but it'll be fun. And we've we've done a couple nights where it's just us, and, and we've had some of the chat be like, "Hey, it's, love the full band," and we'll always be there for the full band too. But this is like really nice just to have some intimate stuff. And Logan might even get like a solo show in. Um, might do an earlier stream something one day uh, you know i might do that too before we were doing this we were doing a lot of solo acoustic gigs and so we have like looping pedals mm -hmm. um we would be able to do justin and i could do easily four hours by ourselves yeah. being able to loop and and do a, an array of songs like you know once again i kind of i i'm i'm growing up i geared toward learning a lot of like country or stuff mm -hmm. uh southern rock country or country <laughs> Southern rockier. That's somehow the most um, country thing I've ever but, heard. But but eventually, <laughs> when Justin and I met, we found an affinity for the Grateful Dead, and that was what really brought us together and being able to kind of connect in different sort of genres. Justin is constantly introducing new artists that he's into uh, songwriting wise because Justin's a producer mm -hmm. and I'm just an entertainer. Like I was just like a guitar just player, just a simple country, just a boy. simple country boy with. Ain't, ain't looking to do no harm unless you talk shit about my band, and then it'll spit in your face. Your <laughs> hey, dog! Thanks for thanks for stopping by, dog. I appreciate it. Um, hey, dog! So, dog is our drummer. He's I, see, when, he, when he says that, he, I, I picture him being like, "Okay, dog here now. <laughs> dog here now. <laughs> what happened to your mustache, Justin? Um, I gave it away to charity. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it away to the deity. <laughs> Thorquato Thor, Thor, Thor says, uh, I'm spoiled. I get to hear them play every day while I work. Oh, that's, oh, cool. that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we uh, we have you pulled up on the screen, too, so we'll be able to. Oh, yeah, if you want to jump in with the chat, you know, I'm, 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 I might miss some of you guys, some of your comments, because we might get into just focus. That's you know, what, yeah, that's why I'm always looking slightly to the left is for the yeah, comments. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, you guys, I, see, it's good when I'm talking to streamers because they understand when I'm talking to people who are coming outside <laughs> of the stream of course, world. Of course, you know, of I'm course. like, 
they're talking to me and I'm over here typing something. And I just feel like that's the rudest fucking thing in the world. Like, but no, you got to take care of your chat. Yeah, man, take, care of, take care of your chat, people, chat, man. Chat's number one. Yeah, man. Chat's yeah. the whole reason anybody can do anything on Twitch. Amen. Twitch. Chat and, is number and one. And I just, to be honest, I just think it's really cool that no matter where you're at or whose chat it is, it's just referred to as chat. chat. Yeah, I just love it because it's just one big autonomous thing with tendrils <laughs> reaching into like different streams. It's and true. Part of chat. Hey, if you're here, you're part of chat. It's like being part of anonymous, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm part of chat. <laughs> oh, thank you for the sub. Uh, who subbed? Oh, dog. Th- or who? Oh no, no one subbed. Uh, I don't even know my own things. Thank you for the follow, dog. I don't. I'm just... <laughs> oh, yeah. I was. About, I was about to say. Dog sub. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for the follow, channel. dog. I appreciate that. I did. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get used to this because coming from the podcasting world, it, it was very much like talk to your guests, focus in. Let's just me and you. We're doing this, and then mm-hmm. so sort of bringing in a whole like a whole, the whole uh, the world basically. It, yeah. it, it, it's been like a kind of a challenge for me, and so I've been trying to keep up on it. Uh, but sometimes, you know. You get in the middle of someone talking about like something very serious, like, oh yeah, and I was taking care of my grandma until she died, and then I started my music career again. I'm not gonna interrupt to thank somebody for okay, thank you, uh, dog, for the biddies, uh <laughs> Karma Girl. Thank so you. anyways, back to your grandma. <laughs> yeah, so back to your yeah. grandma. How, how dead is she? You know, it's just uh <laughs> but it's uh, fully dead all the way um, <laughs> which is, which it's funny because it's it's also uh when we're like playing a song uh i it there's you get like a, something big will happen like somebody will gift like a bunch of subs and and there's that conflict in your head like well do i keep performing the song as <laughs> if i didn't just see that or do i thank them by changing the lyrics to the song or do I just scream out at the top of my lungs in the middle of it while playing the chords? There's so many options. Hey, that, you know, Logan, I, I'm I'm about number three. I I will I will ruin a great take. <laughs> what up? Logan, Logan's just it's so, reactionary. He's so I mean? excitable. Yeah, in well, fact, and 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 it's it is true. Like what it is about the community. So like you want to bring mm-hmm. people in. You want to make you know like uh, Thurquado. He's, I love when the band interacts with me. You know, it, yeah, of course it, we love it too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But the, I'm, I'm sitting there playing, uh, you know, and I'm like reading chat. A lot of times you, I will be playing a song and if I'm not singing or something, or even if I am, I'm reading chat. And I'm like laughing at chat, like while I'm playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just part of it. It's like they're sitting there in front of you. And, and in fact, the fact that they're not making a bunch of noise like you would be in a bar it makes it a little easier to interact with yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> to be able to like respond. It's true. It's true. And, and I mean, it just goes back like how you guys were saying how – you know, when you're in a bar situation, because that was me too. I was performing all the time, me and my wife, and then I played keys for a, a local band, and then I was just a hired little, you know, musical slut. And we, when you're at the end of the night, and I quit drinking, so alcohol is not, you know, I, I don't drink, so like fucking alcoholics piss me off. Uh, <laughs> but and be- only because I I hate that part of myself that I was right, an alcoholic. Right. So now now that I'm not, now I just project that onto other alcoholics. Uh, but they I mean, are they are annoying. That's reasonable. Yeah. Re- yeah re- <laughs> <laughs> but no uh, offense I, to the alcoholics in chat. <laughs> uh, but but get help. Get help. Um, we love you. <laughs> uh, but. The but when you have people drunkenly spilling shit on you or tripping over your stuff or trying to get on the microphone or trying to play your guitar and, and and you know like and it's the end of the night and you gotta tear your shit down and then you gotta battle through the crowd and they're not moving they don't give a fuck they just boop standing here yeah. I get it, man. I get the appeal <laughs> of, of just being like, I'm just going to stream. And honestly, yeah. I've had... I'm going to walk across my hallway. Yes. Having, having, <laughs> you de- having you describe it like that, it gave me a little PTSD. It is, dude. Oh, dude. And I was then, like, I can't tell you how many sorority girls just jump up on the microphone while we took a break. That was the reason why we stopped taking breaks was because we were like, nobody touch our shit. No, you cannot get on the fucking stage. Like... Fuck off. <laughs> no, you cannot come up here and rap, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the worst, dude. When yeah. somebody when somebody's like, hey, can I rap? And I'm like, please don't. <laughs> no, I can take one look at you and tell you can't rap. Uh, Man, there was actually a, a, I can recall a handful of rich guys. Maybe like a real pretty girl in the audience. Like, I can sing, I can sing. She got a rocker look. <laughs> 
she gets up there and it was like, well, what song do you want to do? And she's like, I don't know. What do you guys know? And it's like, we know 600 fucking songs. You tell us what you know. Right. <laughs> like, you're the thing. You're the front woman. And they're just drunk like, I got this. I want to play Valerie. That was one time. They always want to play Valerie. Every time. Yeah. It's, it's what all- key do you do it in? Uh, the written, uh, whatever key you did it uh, Well, I'm a man. And I said, deeper voice. So. I'm a man. I'm a man. Valerie. <laughs> Um. Uh, so you guys were. Uh, <laughs> I mean, these guys are killing me. I'm sorry, nephew. I I didn't say thank you right away. I got distracted <laughs> by the fucking conversation. You know what I was? I was just talking about this shit. I was just once again. This shit. <laughs> once again, um, fine line. You know, hey, but sometimes you eat chat, and sometimes chat eats you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um when someone said something about justin actually doesn't put on pants until three seconds before stream i didn't put on pants story. till three seconds before this it interview. really happened he, when you said video it, justin was like oh, i was like oh we do shit. i was like oh we doing video <laughs> i have to get more coffee because i'm kind of still in my sweatpants <laughs> logan didn't want his coffee his wrinkly kneecaps yeah man, no, <laughs> that, that 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 coffee man that coffee Ooh, i had to step away you guys were talking about uh jam seed and and i know like on the last stream when i kind of popped in uh you said something about hookah like acoustic hookah and glow stick mm-hmm. willy i'm not sure how much you know about them but i i was a huge fan of the well i am a huge fan of them and so i did did they end up making it down to you guys or do you just know them through glow stick uh, no, they they had made it down to Georgia a handful of times in different capacities. Oh. I had some friends when I first started kind of like getting into the jam scene. I listened to a lot of uh, Sound Tribe, Sector Nine, because mm-hmm. they were from Athens, and I lived in a town that was close to Athens, Georgia. They were fr- they're from Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, they're from Atlanta, but like it, like they all went to some of them went to UGA. I never realized how authoritative you speak. I usually have headphones on. You. <laughs> Yeah, I, I speak with I when I I want to be heard. So <laughs> I, uh, I want to be fucking heard. Anyway, right. so I'm getting some PTSD. <laughs> so, but but the uh, but uh, you know, I had a couple friends that had given me a few like you know live discs at the time, and so I remember them. I, we they didn't really travel down here. We had bands like P Groove and um, Umphreys hmm. McGee like to come down to Atlanta and Georgia a lot. Um, and then Justin uh, was a you know. Justin went to like early fish shows, like nineties fish shows and oh, stuff. Nice. So, uh, Found my first dog July fourth, nineteen ninety nine. At uh, not my first dog, my fr- well, one of my first, my first dog I had like after I moved out of my house uh, at a fish show, uh, July fourth, nineteen ninety nine, which has gone down as like one of the best shows. One ever. of the best shows that they've had. And Trey, I think Trey talks about the kid uh, Wooten, uh, Hooten Wooten, or whatever his name was, Peyton, Peyton, Peyton Hooten. Peyton. Peyton, he has a story where he like he's backstage at Lakewood and he's in the band room and a phone rings, just like random phone that's in the green room rings and he picks it up. He's like, band room is like it's this southern woman looking for her son who like is at his first concert and she wants to make sure he's OK. So he he's like, don't worry, Miss Hooten, I got you covered. And he goes out into the crowd and he's like, he's like, got this guy on the walkie. And he's like, yo, man, you see anybody by the phone vestibules? Because there's only two phone vestibules in the entire venue. And they radio back. Yeah, there's some like 16 year old kid looking scared as shit, just like on the phone, like <laughs> looking away. And all of a sudden, like he's Trey's going through the crowd on a golf cart and people are high fiving him and shit. And he shows up at this vestibule and this kid is just standing there and he hops off. Trey does and looks him dead in the face. He's like, Peyton, your mother is worried sick about you. And, and it's just like, can you imagine what that would be like to be up there watching your first fish show, probably losing your mind. Yes. And, and Trey and pulls up Trey on a golf cart. Like not seconds after you see him on stage, like your mother's worried sick about you. Dude, dude, let's let's be fair. Like you can't invent a name like Peyton Hooten. <laughs> Peyton, Peyton Hooten. If, if the, if, and that's exactly how you bet. If you bet she said if, it like if the, if, the, if the guy's name was like John Smith, the story wouldn't be half as entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah, I'd be like John Smith, who gives a fuck? But Peyton dude, Hooten, this is Peyton Hooten. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like, and I want to believe that he was just out of his mind on acid, just fucking seeing God. I know and I shit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what. So, so did you guys ever get into uh, like doing touring with the bands? Like, not 
playing, but like you know, I'm talking about like being in lot and being. Uh, 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 no, I would. I I when I was doing it, I feel like there was some a couple times where you'd catch like two or three shows maybe if they were like it you know in the southeast you go into the maybe the tennessee or the carolinas but like i never i never felt the desire to like really go on the road with a band yeah. i was always playing in a band yeah. so i would you know there's always so much that like seeing other people playing will will be satisfying to me before I'm like, well, fuck this. I want to go play. Yeah. You know, I, I do feel that. I do feel that. You just see to me. No matter people. how good they are, you're like, I'm just trying to go play now. <laughs> uh, but just Justin's band before this, uh, Stokeswood, which I'm wearing one of their t-shirts. Mm. Uh, Stokeswood, Stokeswood did play uh, like Wakarusa and um, uh, Bonnaroo. Um, you know, they, they did tour around. They would bounce back and forth between the East and West Coast. Um, on several occasions, I remember we uh, we went out to Vegas uh, mm-hmm. and L.A. Um, so so yeah, Justin's band toured around. I had a band that stayed local. Uh, Is that Ruben's Rabbit. Bell? Yeah, that's Ruben's Bell. Um, and I had a, uh, that was a band with my brother, and we were kind of like more of like a local celebrity sort of band. Oh, nice. We were on our we were on the way to getting up there, but things just you know just didn't work out. We played a couple of really big shows, a lot of big festivals that were here in Atlanta, um, but it it uh, but we we never really linked up with any other bands that were out there touring or did a tour like that um, because we just you know we we had priorities uh, to be here at home so. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it sucks to tour, kind of. Oh, yeah, it does. It's yeah, it's like uh, when when Stokeswood first started out touring, nobody got paid anything because you couldn't, you know, you barely paid for like the gas and stuff, and you're playing a ton of shows, and we were traveling like all up and down the East Coast. We're like buying jars of peanut butter and like spending the night at a rest stop in 19 degrees in Ithaca on the way to somewhere and you're just like <laughs> freezing your ass off and you're like, let's get some more of that peanut butter rolling up here. Um, and so it, it's like, if you can make it through that and your band is decent, then you can, you can start to like, I remember when we finally got like a per diem and like, Hey, guess what? You get 10 bucks a day. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, hell yeah. Yeah. We were- we could really buy some stuff. We could buy like a whole loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a jar of peanut butter. We, we'll survive Maybe for a week. Eat, you know, like anything you want. You can buy. <laughs> anything you want. <laughs> it's like, it's just like, it's like, it's almost like your dad giving you like lunch money. Like, oh, one. You're like, well, I could eat lunch for the week or I could go buy a dime bag. We got- <laughs> I can be hungry. But, it, yeah. but I can't be sober, so yeah. fuck that. <laughs> oh, do whatever, whatever, whatever you had to do with the, with the ten dollars that you got that day. Well, let, let's, yeah, touring stuff. Oh yeah, no, I I I, I agree. I, there is an aspect to it that I absolutely love. But oh, yeah. ever since I've had a, a child, and um, anytime I have to go out on the road, like the pandemic came and canceled my tours for the summer. But uh, like everybody else, but. Uh, you know, like, just every time I would have to leave town or any time I got, like, I don't know. I just get these horrible flashes of, like, me dying somewhere and then my son growing up without a father. And it's just, like, <laughs> that's where, that's where Damn, my I head... I had those thoughts more. I was, I had a kid the entire time. But, <laughs> yeah. Didn't miss him once. <laughs> but I do live right next door to him, so I, I do, we worked it out. But, no, we, uh, fortunately, you know what? That was, like, back when, like, uh... FaceTime was like a, a new thing. Mm. So like having the technology to like oh yeah see your kid that was like that was huge. Yeah, yeah, totally. do a video call. yeah, yeah you like, could at least like hang out with them a little bit or whatever. It's huh. kind of put, but I remember the first time I did that, like right when I first started touring with Stokeswood, and we were just all like, Well, this changes everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does, man, because like you can actually, I mean, like to be able to see, I mean it's one thing to talk to them, but be able to see people's expressions and how they react right. to what so you're saying. Huge. Yeah, it 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 just makes you sadder a little bit, but it's nice. But then you're just like hang up. For me, it just was sad. But I mean, but let's be honest. Once I get in the van with the boys and we're farting and fucking shit talking, yeah. like you know, <laughs> shit. Which, is, which pretty much is like all you do. Is yeah, right. fart. Yeah. I and, feel listen, like, and every once in a while listen to somebody else's like shitty taste in music for the moment you know <laughs> yeah. like, whoever the driver is you're like god I gotta listen to this again <laughs> fuck me man 
<laughs> oh my god! I mean, your drummer, your drummer used to listen to the weirdest stuff. He would always put on like um, show tunes. Yeah, show tunes like a, like a. Um... Dude, he put on like uh, like um, like the Jurassic Park soundtrack. Oh like... yeah, <laughs> which is great. I mean, it is. You know, it's so not jump... great to listen to on. Not on the road. No. Like, how are you? <laughs> Dude, to be honest, let's be honest. It's really only great to listen to while watching Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I don't get into that kind of like soundtrack kind of movie. I thought he was like. I love, this, I love the soundtrack. You're right. Uh, but I need it to be like paired up with like. It's maybe just it's like, like listening you know, to the Willie. Maybe, it's like listening to the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory on CD. You know what I mean? Just, just get, get, a rainbow. You could just give me like a, a loop of some dinosaurs, maybe. Right. <laughs> Throw in some rars, some rars yeah. and rars. Uh, so let's back up a little bit because I'm curious to know like where you guys kind of come from with all this. Is like, do you. Uh, uh, Starting with Logan, what's sort of your lineage uh, with music? Do you have, like, is your family, do you come from, like, a huge magical... Tell them while, tell them while I get coffee. Hook, hook me up, man. <laughs> coffee? Yeah, blend, blend up my butter coffee. Uh, <laughs> oh, my uh, butter coffee. Yes. Yeah, I drink, uh, I drink butter coffee. I love I butter coffee. I used to drink butter coffee, too. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big guy, and so I'm, you know, concerned about my, my health, and so I try different things, and it seems like this keeps me from eating all day mm -hmm. and you know, I get, I, so I'm able to kind of eat under a calorie deficit despite that. Well, uh, well hold yeah, on, hold I, on. Uh, Before you move on, cause we can always go okay. back to that. So are, do you do like the intermittent fasting? Is that what yeah, you just, Justin and I uh, did that when we, when, when Justin and I first kind of met uh, and we were living together, um, he had gotten into, he would tell me about it. And, uh, and so we tried it and I remember I was hitting the gym a lot. I was eating nothing but, ground turkey sweet potatoes and um uh broccoli like every single day yeah. and i was able to keep it pretty consistent we drank a lot of diet cokes which mm. uh, at, in essence it wasn't the best but but i've kept it up for the most part i did when the pandemic hit i definitely like just threw it out the window yeah. but but right before the pandemic i had bought the i had uh, purchased a bulletproof diet book and, oh, and so i was able to just kind of jump back into it um, now that I just spend so much more time at home, I mean, it was a little bit more. It was d more difficult when I when we were out playing all the time because venues would give you a free meal, right. and we would play at places like um, really high end steakhouses and stuff. Yeah. You guys talking about dieting now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we, we pivoted to dieting. <laughs> we pivoted. Um, we did, but but we, but we would eat at these steakhouses that would just they would give us like a fifty dollar tab, and because you know most of the time we would encourage the patrons to buy us drinks we would just purchase some uh, elaborate meal and it would be freaking amazing. Um, and it would kill our diet. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so cheers to all you butter coffee drinkers. <laughs> well, no, uh, no, I, I know the, uh, I have that, um, I had that same kind of thing. Cause I went keto you're kind of referencing the keto diet and then, um, yeah. uh, and then the intermittent fasting. I did that too. I'm a, big fatty so like i i have to do <laughs> dude i'm a fat ass dude like i was like 320 in high school so like I, my, my body is just ready to get fat at any moment it's just like it, it's just i can't wait motherfucker like it's just the fat cells are just fucking on the mark you're just you're one gobstopper away from for, losing it all for real like, no I'm no trying, and, trying to get fat yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that what we're doing we're getting I'm fat <laughs> But but being on the road and stuff is like it's a horror show trying to have that kind of diet or even playing out regularly when you're yeah. not what you know missing your dinner like you got to get to the venue all hella early and fucking you know you're there for hours oh, yeah. and you, you're you, like y'all have the French fries and whiskey please yeah exactly. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, uh, just put cheese on those tater tots and uh, that'll be my dinner for the evening yeah exactly and and so how do you how do you how do you maintain that i i ate a lot of nuts from like uh dry uh, uh truck stops i'd get the nuts and it was so stupid like it, i i carried around coconut oil i'd just be in the back like everybody be eating <laughs> fucking in and out and like fucking you know mcdonald's and i'm like, oh, good guys i got nuts and this coconut oil it's all good <laughs> <laughs> They're like, bro, you're not good. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, no, they're not. Exactly. Like, everything okay? Is there something right. you can talk about? I'm and then take a video and show it to your future self well, to let them know that let you know that you're not good. <laughs> exactly. And then pair that with a, a a van full of just the most asshole twats of 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 men, 
and 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 there you go. <laughs> it just 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 nothing yeah, but ass reamings all day, meal. all night. It's that's like, not the happy meal. That's the sad meal. Yeah, you get the sad meal. Today. <laughs> the sad meal. Yes, exactly. The <laughs> no toy. Body no is toy. waiting with to get fixed with the coconut oil. <laughs> That's a little, it's like a savory sweet. Yeah, well, you know, you do come, well, once you get your body into that mode, you do kind of get used to it, but after mm-hmm. doing it for like a year or so, when I did finally go off of it, I was like, that is, was the most disgusting, like, to me, it's so fucking gross, just to think, <laughs> like, all I'm eating is, is leafy greens and meat and fucking oil, and like, to, it just, it just doesn't <laughs> It, it it tastes good, but it it just it gets old real quick. Oh, I think quick. Any, anything that you, yeah yeah any, definitely anything that you just quick. keep eating day after day, at a certain point you're like fuck this shit. That's the difficult <laughs> like that was that was part of the difficulty at the time or now because Justin and I aren't keeping each other accountable for eating uh, just ground turkey and. Um, you know, sweet potatoes and broccoli every single day. Like we were, at, we were almost like competing because I remember Justin being like, "Dude, I've only eaten like fifteen hundred calories today. How many have you eaten?" And I'm checking my my fitness pal. I'm like, "Shit, you're like, you know, uh, two hundred calories less than me." Fuck, man, that's just because <laughs> Logan to be like, "I feel like I could eat this chocolate sundae." <laughs> Dude, it's a cheat I, day. I remember, we used to play it. There's a there's a uh, like a wing place here in the south called Wild Wing Cafe, and uh, they we would play we would play there like every Wednesday and for a long time, um, and we would get the turkey burger with uh, steamed broccoli, but we would tell them to not use butter to steam the broccoli, and that was foreign to them. <laughs> and then uh, and then we but at the end of the meal we would both get a giant like ice cream sundae. They'd be like. <laughs> How are you losing weight? It's like, could we eat like this? <laughs> well, because it's our only meal of the day. Yeah, it would yeah. be our only meal. That's a, that's how you, that's how I lost a ton of weight. I mean, I've gained it all back, which I'm cool with. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there came a point where I was like, am I developing a complex over this? Or, uh, <laughs> I remember that day. I remember you were yeah. like, I think I'm over this. I, I was like, I was like, I don't know if I want to be that skinny. I, it, it's not like it's slowing me down any. I mean, I guess it technically is slowing me down. I'm a little heavier. <laughs> But I feel, but, but he's not leaving the house. He's like, he, he's not like running from anything. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm so. not running at all, yeah. <laughs> dude. He's barely walking, dude. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, that's been the hardest part about all this is just trying to maintain, you know, just some semblance of 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 health. If you're into it, it like. Me trying, like, because the gym shut down, and mm. half the reason I went to the gym was for the fucking steam room, and that just sounds like a fucking nightmare now. Like, I couldn't imagine. No, don't go no steam room. <laughs> <That just sounds laughs> don't, go. don't do it. <laughs> but but just trying to like maintain some kind of 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 balance with nutrition and exercise has really thrown me through a fucking loop, man. And <clears throat> like you guys, I just sort of once this pandemic hit, I think everybody just went out and bought all the ramen noodles and toilet paper and just started eating and shit, man. Because it was just, <laughs> I, I I like it. Like, you see it all over the internet. Everyone's with their quarantine thickness. So I think everyone's sort of embracing this. But mm. it's still not healthy to be inside, getting no <laughs> sunlight, fucking eating all day, and just watching Netflix. You know, it's still not a healthy <laughs> lifestyle. Have yeah, you... we're destroying ourselves. We're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we you... better hope those VR realities come through real quick. <laughs> right. I'm... We need to start transferring our brain. I'm gonna, hey. I'm gonna have to live in one after a while. <laughs> Man, Ready Player One, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, so, Logan, did you ever talk about? No, I didn't. The musical roots. Or... Yeah, no. I hadn't. I hadn't really got to that. Because um... I, I want to hear. I want to hear your version of the story too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> um. Well, my uh, my father and uh, mother were both just like hobby musicians. My dad played guitar. Uh, my mom sang a little bit, uh, just as amateurs and stuff. So, uh, uh, but they always encouraged me to uh, to in, you know enjoy music. I tried playing guitar when I was probably like six years old, and I, I vaguely remember not enjoying that, just being like, "Oh, this hurts my hand," or whatever. Fuck this. Um, but then I got into uh, when I got into middle school, uh, there was like music programs, and they just kind of placed you in in these things so i started out in band and i wanted to play the saxophone when i didn't get it the teacher was like you're a very 
tall kid, why don't you go play the upright bass? And so, and so I played in the orchestra for uh, all throughout my adolescence. Uh, I was in Allstate and um, uh, I was in like little bands here and there, uh, blues bands, rock bands. And I always uh, enjoyed singing. And so when I finally, when I got to be about 16 or 17, Dave Matthews and John Mayer were starting to hit the scene. Um, and I was very impressed with both of their guitar playing. And so I started playing a lot more acoustic guitar. Uh, and then that kind of carried throughout my uh, my 20s. Uh, and then when I, uh, like I said, I had a, I had several bands with my brother. Um, and then once that that part of my life, by probably about 30 years old, when, when that started to fizzle out, Justin and I uh, met uh, because Justin was producing the album uh, the Rubens Bell album. So that kind of, once again, ties into the work that Justin has done. Um, and uh, growing up, you know, my, my parents listened to a lot of like Allman Brothers and Leonard Skinner. And my dad liked uh, Marshall Tucker band. My mom really enjoyed James Taylor and Garth Brooks and like, a lot of the 90s country stuff. So that was what I grew up on and learned how to play. And it's very uh, indicative of what I play now as a solo artist. Um, but when I got to be about 20 in, in my 20s, uh, I started getting into jam and I like a, I'm a really big uh, fan of Soundtrap Sector 9. I've, I don't play. Of course, I don't play the, the kind of music that they do. But how could you? I, yeah, how could I do it all? But but <laughs> I, I would I, that was like one of the bands that I followed around them and Umphreys. I was just totally into both of those bands and they they just happened to play a lot together. So. Um, so that's kind of my musical history in, in, uh, in a nutshell. Hell, I did a five minute nutshell. So, so wait, I want to know, Justin, does that compare to the story that you know, or is that is that is that right, or is there other things he left out? No, that sounds that sounds. That actually sounds <laughs> I don't have a way to come back for it. it sounds about right. Yeah. Yes. This, He's a good man and thorough. <laughs> what? When did you? Uh, when did you? When did you like? Um, well, I, I'm just curious. Have you ever been a full time musician, or were you a full time musician before the pandemic, or was? Did I you... wasn't. Okay. Uh, well, I I wasn't in my twenties. <clears throat> it wasn't until, like I said, I met Justin, mm -hmm. and and I had a lot of gigs that I needed a guitar player for. And Justin just and Justin needed a lead singer at some point in time right. too. He had a couple gigs. Um, and I have no desire to be a lead singer. So. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I have all the desire to be a lead singer. I don't Someone's got to do camera. it. Yeah, I don't even want to. I don't want to lead sing or be on camera. And then here I am on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it. I just have no like uh, desire to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like people are like, take your hat off so we can see your eyes. I'm like. Nah, yeah. Leave that alone. I'll be in the back. <laughs> I'll be in the back. <laughs> That's where I live too, man. I live in the back. I have no desire to be out front singing, but yeah. I, I started singing, which reminds me, which I shouldn't be, but Saucy, you never gave me the song you want me to sing for everyone, so I'm going to give you your point back if you don't tell me what to do. Man, that's like asking your teacher what happened to that pop quiz. I know, I know, but, yeah. but here's the thing. If I don't do it, I'm going to just hear all the shit in the world it's just, it's like, I just, i'll never hear the end of it yeah get my point you know? chat. yeah hey. chat holds you accountable logan light skinner this is news to me oh oh yeah i'm i am a skinner thing. yeah right. skinner's not bad it, you know what, what happened what how did skinner turn into the the meme how did skinner turn into oh. the, the the butt of the joke how did that happen oh, those guys do fucking kill it like it's not like there's a lack of talent or or good songs it was in my opinion it was free birds you know just because because they had the live at the fox album and ronnie asked the question what do you want to hear and everybody at that point in time knew that the word free bird would forever live on the tongues of an audience yes. all the it doesn't matter where the fuck you are you could be at some deep metal show to small coffee house some person and i say person because i don't want to just because i love the song i love free bird and you got the audience is ruining it for me <laughs> Um, but <laughs> but it's just as soon as somebody said Freebird. But once again, like I think that the I think that the meme really happened when um, in like the '90s 
when uh, Johnny Van Zant took over lead singer uh, because that's when the music really just took a dive. Uh, even my father, who is like a diehard Skinner fan, will tell you. He's just like, yeah, probably like 91. They put out another live album, and it was just, you know, well, his, that. That's his brother, right? Or was this after his brother? Yeah. That was his. That was his. That's that his was brother, brother, Johnny Van Zitt. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know their names, uh, but I knew it's his. Fine. I knew his brother took over, and then they yeah. kept going, and that's when I saw them, and they still killed it. Honestly, when I yeah. saw they they played with ZZ Top, who I love ZZ Top, uh, yeah. But uh, they, I saw them paired up, and the Black Crows for whatever reason. The Black Crows opened. It was Leonard Skinner, and then it was ZZ Top. So there you go. Oddly enough, I know about that tour because. Oh, shit. That was the tour that the Black Crows, Chris Robinson got really fucked up one night and came out on stage and was like, the music that you're hearing tonight is brought to you by the Black Crows and not Miller Lite or whatever it is. Yes. And they kicked them off immediately um, because, because uh, ZZ Top was sponsored by uh, Miller Lite at the time. They had just Miller Lite signs. Every ZZ Top knew what the game was. Though. Right. They weren't letting their ego get to it, you know. They were like, uh, "Let's get that that cold Miller Light money." Yeah, <laughs> that freezing cold. And Chris Robinson was just young enough at the time and just arrogant enough to just be like, "Fuck all this, dude." I think <laughs> I remember that because they did they put it on like MTV News and shit, right? Like that was like yeah. a, a whole thing. He like came out and was speaking out against me, and, but it's like yeah, Tabitha Soren was like giving it. To, <laughs> Kurt Loder was all over it. Was just like. <laughs> hey, this is MTV News, and I've got some fucking shit to tell you. Black Crows are fighting establishment, man. <laughs> go Black Crows. Yeah, uh, go Black Crows. Skinner was Logan's first concert at age seven. Ooh, on yeah. EQ. I appreciate it. Thank you for but dropping that's those. My, that's my mama. Oh, that's your mama. Hello, yeah. Mama Logan. Uh, thank you for dropping in and being here. Mother Logan. <laughs> Mother, Mother Logan. Logan. Mother Logan, thank you so much for gracing us <laughs> with your presence. I was going to say, Thor Quato, you're like, I, I'm, I'm actually not, I'm not the lead singer at all. <laughs> uh, Logan Logan's probably sings, I mean, there would be nights where maybe I sing more, but it's it's usually pretty rare that I sing. I have like my wheelhouse of things that I that I sing. Uh, but Logan does most of the singing, and then now Priska's with us too, so she does quite a bit of the singing. Um, I can lead sing on specific stuff, but I, I just it was never my intention to be like a lead singer. Yeah, yeah, it has to be specific. Like most Radiohead, most uh, almost all Nirvana, almost all Counting Crows, Sublime, um, Sublime. Those that's that's Justin's. Uh, uh, some Alice in Chains, Tool. You know, like Justin's gonna really, really go attack that stuff because he has the mindset of that. I don't, I don't take any country songs from Logan. <laughs> no, there. Uh, uh, he'll do. Uh, you'll do. Um, shameless. Shameless. But that's no, a Billy. Shameless. Song. Wait, yeah. that's a Billy Joel song, <laughs> which is a conundrum for me because I'm, I'm the Garth singer. Yeah, that's like what. I, that's what I heard. Cause I'm shameless. Yeah, shameless yeah. Is a man I, 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 be. I rock that song. It's just like. I don't. I sing it probably more like Billy Joel would sing it than Garth Brooks. Oh, and man. sometimes Justin can be a bit of purist when it comes down to like that because he he doesn't like the version uh, or doesn't like it, but he he would prefer that I do the version of Atlantic City by Bruce Springsteen and not the band. Got you. Got you. So he's like, dude, don't play that stupid band version. I'm like, I've never said that in my life. But <laughs> I hate the band. Get that shit out of here. Let me uh, allow me to clear the air. Here. Like I said, there's some, there's gonna be some fabrications. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We can handle fabrications. Uh, so, so uh, Justin, that what. I would love to hear your uh, your lineage. Do you come from a big musical family, or I do? As a matter of fact, my nice. mom and dad met in a Grateful Dead cover band. Oh, that's so amazing. Dope. Uh, so dope. This is cool. That's the coolest thing. Well, they did like a bunch of Grateful Dead and Bob Dylan and John Prine kind of Amer Americana music. They just basically were like an Americana band uh, in the 70s. And um, and so my mom was a singer. My dad was a guitar player. And they met in that band. And then they moved out to uh, Seattle uh, when they were pregnant with me. And so I was actually born out in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, and then they were they were in, they were a band in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they're like back and forth between here and Atlanta, or between there and Atlanta. 
And um, so they came back, but I, so I grew up in Atlanta. Uh, and uh, I would say, like, I was always around it. And I didn't, my dad would, like, teach me some stuff here and there. And it, it was in, like, fifth grade, I think. In fifth grade, I'd been exposed to the guitar and stuff. So I kind of knew how to plunk around on it, like, a little bit. But I wasn't, like, really interested in it. I didn't have, like, a, a drive to do it. Um, but I always loved music, obviously, because my parents were musicians. And we would sing songs and stuff. And it was a, I was around it all the time. And I kind of, like, idolized it in a way, uh, even though I didn't know how to do it. I always kind of knew that one day I would play music like the adults <laughs> played music. Yeah. What happened is these kids from the middle school came. Like, it was our fifth grade year and they were like next year you're going into middle school so like a bunch of kids from the middle school came over and did like a presentation like here's all the middle school kids like these are the people you'll be going to school with next year and um i remember this girl got up there and sang uh mr postman so she was like wait a minute mr postman and i was just like i think i love her <laughs> uh, and then and then immediately <laughs> immediately afterwards this guy gets on and he plays uh johnny be good on guitar and then I look around and like all the girls are like going crazy. And I was like, I think I want to be that guy. <laughs> so that was and I had a similar situation when it came to Dave Matthews and John Mayer. I saw like all these ladies like that. I was like, I think I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was definitely like, I, I definitely felt that's when I was like, oh, you know what? There is fame and glory to be had within these walls. <laughs> and so, uh, and so then I went back and was like, yo, pops, let's, let's learn how to play guitar. Cause I'm, I'm down. And he was really into it. My dad was more of like a hobby musician, never wanted to make it a career. My mother, my mother was actually like a songwriter and like played out all the time and mm -hmm. the rest, and still is involved with music to this day. Oh, uh, right. My mother's name is Queenie Mullinix. If anybody wants to look up her, uh, she has albums out and stuff. I don't know if it's on. She's a, gr a great songwriter. Yeah. So uh, she's like, really she's a song. songwriter and she does. So I grew up with that whole thing. I grew up actually in a studio uh, my mother was married to um, uh, this guy, Billy Hume, who would later go on to produce or to mix and record all the early Atlanta crunk music. Oh, like, like Little John, Ying Yang Twins. Yeah. Isai, is, uh, David Banner, Bone Crusher. Oh, um, <laughs> nice. so, that Bone Crusher shit is so hard. Dude. So I was so I was in all that. I have Bone Crusher's number in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could call so, Bone Crusher right now. It's, hey, he's gonna go pop the trunk. It's yeah. so true that I, I, def, I definitely have it in my phone. So late. I, 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 I remember saying it recently. I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, there it is." <laughs> <laughs> you can actually see. You Thank you for see. Uh, It's probably backwards on here, but it says Bone Crusher, which is hilarious. Thank you. It's just like I don't even know his real name is. I um, <laughs> don't need so. to. Don't care. <laughs> What up, Bone? Last name Crusher. <laughs> bone, 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 bone. Uh, so, uh, so I started playing and playing. And my dad and I would like play. He had like a music room basically set up, um, and so I would always just like get home from school, play, uh, and then then when I was a teenager, you know, it was like kind of cool to like get some bands going and stuff like that. And we, you know, I would just keep practicing and practicing. I was doing terrible at school at that point, and my dad was like, "Well." you're not doing good in school. So you can't go downstairs and practice anymore. So I just left my house at, uh, at 16. You just like, no, I'm going to, I got to do this. I was like, like no, I'm good. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, uh, so I'm just, just curious. Wait, he said you couldn't practice. Well, it, it, the thing is, is that I wasn't fulfilling my obligations in school. Gotcha. Oh, I see. That's what you, okay. so he was like, you can't just like leisurely go down there and just play all night. Right. When, when you're failing in school right. or whatever. <clears throat> because it was one of those things where it was like, I would like do a standardized test. It was like the, the cliche, like I'll do a standardized test and they'll put me in like a gifted program. Uh -huh. And then they'll pick me out like six weeks later when the first report cards come out. <laughs> because they're not doing the work. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so it was kind of one of those scenarios and I was just sick of it. And I was, so at 16, I was just like, you know, playing music and smoking pot and stuff like that. And I was like, well, fuck this. I'm out of here. Uh, joined a band, played in that band uh, till I was like, uh, 17 or 18 was like living in an apartment waiting tables like with my lead singer and stuff doing a bunch of lsd and uh <laughs> and <laughs> i mean it really was that was like pretty much what that was this was like 98 99 and then i met uh dog in 99 late eight, 98 or early 99 and through our friend homer and we formed a band then and i was in that band for eight years and it was a, a little like grunge uh 
math prog <laughs> rock thing uh trio you can find that stuff on that, that that's called contraption if anybody wants to look it up it's pretty it's pretty heavy with a k stuff. with a k or no. A c oh no 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 no. <laughs> no 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 never we would never do that we um, would never do that no corn ruined that for everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they really did they really did. <laughs> you just can't do it corn was the last band that that could do that and still be still be cool with a k <laughs> i looked at album the other day so <laughs> Uh, and and hey, not to talk shit. Life is peachy is the shit. Life is peachy was uh, so yeah. monumental. Good. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So we had that band till like 2005. We released an album in 2005, 2006 to 2007. I quit that band and I started working full time at a studio. I actually went back to the studio that I grew up in, <laughs> and it was like. And like learned how to do all that, learned how to do just how to produce, how to mix and produce. And I was there, you know, 15 hours a day, seven days a week kind of stuff, like destroyed a marriage over it. Oh. Um, did that. I did the entire thing. Mm -hmm. nice. I wouldn't say destroy. I mean, we are not married anymore, but it, it didn't destroy the relationship. But but they I, live next door to each other. Yeah. So. Is that now is, we have, is that the baby? Now we have a great relationship. Is that's that the, the baby, baby mama? mama? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's really actually that's really nice that that you maintained a a civil relationship with that person because uh, how terrible is it when you have two people who are kind of trying to co-parent who hate each other? It, oh, like, it's terrible. And this isn't you know this isn't even just civil like we fucking love each other. Oh, like, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and she, she's remarried with a kid. We're like good friends. Mike Black is her husband, and he pops into our stream all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. That's and we're great. like. We're like actual friends. Like I was just outside talking to her earlier. Like, oh, what's up? Um, <laughs> hey. We live next door to each other, and it works great. It's it's like uh, it's the modern family, you know. If that if that <laughs> works, man, you know, it's like uh, you can't hate on it if it works. I mean, like that that always makes me happy when I hear those kind of stories. It's like, yeah, you know, it did work out between us, but we're friends, and you know. We love our child, and we want the best. Yeah, and for I still it. like her for all the same reasons I liked her before. We just ain't trying to live together. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't be responsible for her happiness. Um, <laughs> it's just uh, it's, it's not the, it's not something I'm willing to. <laughs> I guess willing to. Uh, no, I feel you, but compromise. That, yeah. Sometimes it happens though. Like when I mean, I don't know what the situation was, but like you know, sometimes you get in these these positions where it's like this other person is looking to you for some kind of happiness or meaning, and it's like if you don't have that within yourself, this is this is not going to happen. And I mean, I'm just a crazy ass selfish artist though. Who I like, feel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that too. I feel just that like, too. I'll just be like, I'm sorry. For the next three months, I'll be practicing piano. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm leaving now on tour. It's like the double-edged sword of like the things that make you great at being a musician mm -hmm. and doing this whole thing are you know make you terrible at other things in your life. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And it's just this. It's almost like a. It's almost like a mental disorder almost you know what i mean like it's something you yeah. just keep doing over and over like you have to keep going. you just have to do it and and you know but i've always respected that mm, so me too me, me I'm too like, i'm yeah. like you know at the end of the day you'll have some regrets in some areas but if you did the other thing you'd have regrets in other areas and mm -hmm. you know at some point you just gotta like kind of make a call yeah which one, <laughs> which one would you rather regret the most the fact that you can you know that that you played guitar or played music uh or that the lasting relationship that you thought was going to be forever is not there you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh thank you for the bits everybody thanks for the subs and bits um, <laughs> I, I have an i have an uncanny ability to be able to turn a conversation completely around and make it sad <laughs> well, that's okay. Which that, that's okay because this is life, and this is the life of an artist, man. Like it's not easy because you do have. It's like you have this relationship with your art, and then you're expected to have like these relationship with like other people, and it's like a lot of times that doesn't fucking work out very well. I, it gets even worse because I find myself like I find myself like entering into relationships I know like probably won't work for like <laughs> song inspiration. Oh, <laughs> it was like it's almost like you invite the pain so that way you can. I'm like, I write such better songs when I'm like pining over a girl than when I'm like having like a healthy like. <laughs> there's a there's a musician that's here in town, and that, that was his like mo for the longest time. He would go out and just get blackout hammered and be in 
just put himself in the most unhealthy situations just so he had an opportunity to write about it the next Gotta day. live your life, man. Yeah. Uh, so so to get back to get back slightly back on track. So after after I, I started producing in the studio, I started like producing like a uh, bunch of local bands, friends that I knew. Um, and then like what kind of that, genres? Um, lots of different kinds of genres, though. Um, though I ended up, I ended up kind of leaning towards doing a more indie rock thing, or experimental rock, experimental rock, indie rock, prog mm-hmm. rock, and, and stuff like that. Like Coffee. A, as weird as possible. Hit me, hit you. Um, just basically, I just wanted to make really, I just wanted to make fucking awesome music. I I didn't, <laughs> I didn't care about anything else. I wasn't even looking for like anything. Like, oh, is this going to hit? Is this going to be big? I was just like, dude, I just found like solace and like finally, instead of like grinding it out and like being in bands and weren't going anywhere and doing all this kind of thing, I, w- I was like, I'm really doing something like I'm really putting it down here, you mm-hmm. know, by like, recording and learning how to record. So I so I produced all the Stokeswood stuff. And then by the time I was doing their second album, their bass player quit and I was 30 um, or maybe 29 or so, 29 or 30. And I was like, I'll play bass for you guys. Uh, I, I think it's the last time, last chance I'll have to like be in a band who's going to do something like this. Who's going to like tour and do all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so I, so I joined up with Stokeswood and I kind of put like my production career. I would still work with bands occasionally if I was in town or, do some mixing or something like that but i i kind of just switched was like cool well now i'm in a tour i'm in a touring band and that's what i do and that was pretty much all through the 2010s that's how i met uh dion oh dion uh, yeah someone uh, said who, something about dion earlier and i wasn't yeah, sure what uh, they were referencing. ATL, atl dharma girl <laughs> yeah they were talking about dion. that's uh that's dion and she, she actually the reason i know her is because she was at was it i think it was 420 or Sweetwater, the Sweetwater Festival or big, it was some festival here in Atlanta and uh, she saw us and then I uh, basically like met her and we became like good friends after that. Um, uh, so she knows me from Stokeswood. Oh, cool. Uh, for sure. And Stokeswood, Stokeswood did pretty well. We like worked with like uh, the guys from Imagine Dragons. We oh, had a song on cool. NBA 2K17. Oh, okay. Uh, we were, we were, we went on tour with X Ambassadors. Uh, we were like playing out of the Viper room in LA every like two months. And so then, so then talk, talk about that a little bit. What was sort of uh, the, were, were you guys under a label? How did you guys get to that point? No, in fact, we, we never, we, everything that we did was in house. The only Beautiful. thing we ever had, the only thing we ever had was an entertainment lawyer. And he happened right. to be the manager of Imagine Dragons. <laughs> so that worked out. Are they from Atlanta, uh, Imagine Dragons? Uh, no, their drummer is. Oh, okay. They're actually from Las Vegas. And uh. our keyboardist had a contact from Las Vegas. Um, and and then they they are – Imagine Dragons curated the NBA 2K17 soundtrack uh. and chose one of our songs, like, specifically. Wow. Uh, we had no clue until they were like, hey, we chose your song for this. And we are like, what? It was huge for us. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we still have people like comment. And I love on, that song, by the way. We have people comment on the video of that song still to this day. Like, brings me back to two K seventeen, man. <laughs> you know, and we like got like legitimately booked for Bonnaroo. We had wow. like actual. We had South by Southwest like real slots. Yeah, you know? yeah, not on the outskirts. <laughs> yeah, we had like real, real stuff. We got we did get signed to Paradigm um, booking agency for a little bit, but it didn't it didn't really work out the way we wanted it to. Wow. Um, so it was like, uh, it was a real kind of surreal experience to see the fruits of your labor, but it was also kind of like getting caught up in the rat race a little bit too. Cause I found myself like catering to that, right. that whole LA, uh, like how do we, do we need, how's the hook on this song need to be instead of just like really concentrating on being like. Just write the best music you can, God. which, and I don't regret it. Like, I still liked the process of trying to write music a certain way. Uh-huh. There's still some, there's still an art to that. For and sure. I, I, did, I definitely didn't compromise on the music. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, the shit's still weird, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I still had that in the back of my head while I was doing it. Um, so it's just kind of a different thing than just being like, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to write the song and it is what it is. Um, and uh, so it was, it was a real interesting 
ride with those guys. So we're, you know? so then were you, who was taking over? I mean, because you had to have some kind of management who was booking and, and trying to get yeah, you. Yeah, our, our guitar player, our guitar player, Mark, did the entire thing the entire time. Wow. Which uh, kudos cool. to him. And I mean, I, I kind of showed up at the latter end of their, their run and I was kind of like mentoring under Mark and it, I, I I can only imagine the kind of stuff that he had to put up with with these boys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Were you guys rowdy? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah well, fucking yeah, they were Dude, rowdy. We were, shit. And, and you know, Logan wasn't even around for the rowdiest times, and we were still rowdy. <laughs> and, but there were there were times back in the day where we would go out in the town of Miami because mm. we were actually big in Miami before we were ever big in Atlanta. That's tight. Hell yeah, so we, were, we were pulling like five six hundred people in Miami. Nice. And Miami's like an entertainment town so we're getting paid well, but we're yeah. going down there like every six weeks. Wow. And nice. playing like a week's worth of shows between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. And, all, and then all through Florida, we would we would hit all through Florida. We'd be we'd do well in Tampa. We'd do well in um we were even like up in Boca. We were like just all, Orlando was pretty bad. But we were all <laughs> over Florida basically. <laughs> um doing that whole thing before we ever could really pull huge in Atlanta. And then it wasn't until later that we were able to pull like five or 600 people in Atlanta. It was kind of funny that it's, it's like Miami was like our home away from home and we would party Miami parties. Oh man. Party. I mean, <laughs> that's what they're known for. <laughs> it just, they fucking party there. We can't escape it. It's unbelievable. Were you guys mostly just drinking? I mean, were you guys uh, in uh, heavier things or no? I mean, heavier. No, I, mean, I wasn't like shooting up heroin or anything. <laughs> I don't know. I was. No, I was, no, no. I, I, for, fortunately for me, I am in or I have an inordinate fear of needles. Good. To begin with, so that was never like an option for me. I'm like, you guys gonna do what? No thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's pretty gross. Yeah. And you're... plus, it was so cliche from the '90s too. <laughs> I, I saw so like I had people with legitimate heroin problems, friends in the '90s, and I remember seeing it and be like, oh god, this is terrible, and so. It's kind of like in the 90s, nobody did, nobody was really into cocaine because it was like an 80s thing. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until the 2000s came about that people were like, oh, cocaine? Hey, let's get into that. I'm like, what? That's like our parents' drug. How lame, <laughs> That's an old how lame is that? How lame is that the fuck do cocaine? Uh, and now, the, like, you've gone to a bar, like eight out of 10 people have cocaine in their pocket. Harm a girl. We, like, we're losers. Just, we're just sort of starting to get into their the the rise of Stokewood, which I'm really curious about is um, when you started doing these markets. When you had these, uh, were you targeting these markets? Like how how were you growing? They, we, were, we were just like this ragtag group of fucking Georgia, yeah. Georgia kids who like didn't we 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 I had some knowledge of the industry and I knew mm. how to I knew how to make good music. Right. But as far as like being a band that did all this stuff, like I said in the beginning, we were just like. Well, just book a bunch of shows, and yeah, if, if well, we can break even, then. Uh... And and Mark and Adam had already basically been touring around as a duo to all these college towns and stuff. Adam had a really the lead singer had a really great uh, already like track record with a bunch of these Georgia Southern and and uh, Macon and all these other markets that were in Georgia, and it just kind of. When, when the band formed, uh, they were also playing uh, in a small college town called Milledgeville, and the drummer... That's where they all went to school. Yeah, they all went to school in that area, so they they were able to capitalize on those, like, mm. sorority and fraternity markets every once in a while, and, mm. you know, being able to have some clout to move to other college towns, and then, and then you know, Mark, then Mark basically just, like, would do, like, what everybody does, and just gets online and emails and calls venues and be like, Hey, can we come and play your, your spot? Yeah. Basically. Well, I mean, we were just really poor at first and you just had to be like, you just had to be set in like, you just had to know that you were just going to be poor and you were going to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. And then you just had to trust that like the music and everything was good enough to at some point break through. Hey, it's kind of like what we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Uh, at, at a certain point, like, as an artist, you have to trust that you're good enough that as long as you persevere, uh, it'll get better and better. We used to always be like, slow, conservative growth. That's what we, <laughs> if it's not getting worse, it's getting better, you know? And yeah. so as long as we were just adding a couple more people here, a couple more people there. And then one day it just got to the point where, you know, the music we were putting out became more modern and people started to take notice. Uh, 
and our live shows were hype and and our singer was good so so people just at, at a certain point it just became a thing it just became that that thing that people look for and we we probably could have kept going too but it was just like you know bands fall apart for various reasons <laughs> what, um you know i mean if you, if you don't want to talk about that's fine but what what was some of the was there a core reason or an overview reason or was it just i hate you and we gotta get away from each other no it was uh some lead singer cliche like uh yeah like yeah just yeah. L- large ego low self-esteem kind yeah. of thing i got you um, <laughs> and perform with no shoes. <laughs> yeah, but Adam Adam did perform with no shoes all the time. He he couldn't wear shoes on stage, and sometimes his the bottom of his feet would be like caked in black stage gunk, Ew. and it was so weird. I would, I remember being like, dude, do not take your shoes off. Um, <laughs> he'd be like, oh man, it's fun. Or like they would have ca- like they would play on small stages, and cables would be everywhere. And I'd be like, dude, how can you step all over these cables with your bare feet? Yeah. Like, Knows what's on these cables, bro. Like, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't care. Yeah. Wait, uh, what, what about playing in London, Justin? Oh, uh, so Dion was uh, the I guess maid of honor for a for a, for her best friend, and and they always wanted uh, Stokeswood to be there to play, but they couldn't afford to. It was in London, and they couldn't afford to fly Stokeswood over there. And being the the Justin fans, they were my only fans I ever had, to be honest. Yeah, everybody um, would always come up to the stage and scream everybody else's name but Justin, except for Dion. You know, like, <laughs> and, and she's awesome. Uh, and so uh, I went over there and DJed the wedding. And, and man, I was getting hammered there, too. I didn't even, you know, it was like, it's, I don't even really like traveling. <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he doesn't like being on camera. He doesn't like traveling, but he does it all for the love of music. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even really like traveling, but I did. Well, once I get somewhere, I have a lot of fun. Yeah. So we we threw down. I, the last night in London, I ended up at some weird underground club um, on ecstasy at like 6 a.m. I, I don't even know how I found it or how I. It, it was a girl who spilt their beer in her purse. Yeah, I spilled and a like, beer in her purse. Rebecca, she's cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. London was fun. Funden. <laughs> Funden. Funden London. Funden London. Those those weird nights that you just end up like head full of drugs wandering a city streets. Like those are yeah, the, the random it's just sometimes like, you gotta give into it. I, absolutely, absolutely. I you sometimes <laughs> you gotta jump over the edge, man. Uh yeah. good. you just gotta go over, man. You just gotta gotta remember to come back sometime. <laughs> yes. I, I, the thing is I'm I'm so like uh you know if somebody's like, "Hey, you want to do something?" I'm like, "Yeah, I've seen that movie a million times. Like, I, I don't have the desire to get fucked up like I used to. It's just at some point, I naturally just kind of like, eh, been there. Wow. <laughs> I've had my fun. How you doing, hot local mom? Thanks for stopping up, but stopping by. I appreciate it. Hot local mom. <laughs> so, no Stokeswood birthday party for Harma Girl. Unfortunately, not. But oh, well, um, sorry, your dreams are crushed, Harma maybe, Girl. Maybe we'll play. Maybe we'll play a. Um, Risky Biscuit will play a Stokeswood song for you on your birthday. Which I already have. I already have one in mind. There you go. There you go. See? See? Never give up hope, Harma girl. Keep keep your head to the sky, girl. Don't. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to do this embarrassing song for you guys cuz they gave me he gave me the 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 song they want. And so we're going to do a song and we'll we'll come back and talk to the uh to these guys you guys are gonna sit there and watch me and make me really uncomfortable like i said i'm a background player i usually play guitar or keys um so i i'm not much of a singer and uh, i've sort of done this to myself to sort of force me to get more comfortable with it but okay. it's very uncomfortable and okay. it, i have not gotten okay. comfortable so we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna um let me pull it up real quick um I'm excited to see. I didn't get a chance to catch what song it was. So. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Well, you'll. <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just see what I can do here. Okay, I can't see the chat, guys. So, uh, if I know, I can't answer your questions anyway. So, I um, I'm gonna be doing this song. God damn it! All right. You I'm, got this. I'm I'm trying to figure out how I can. Okay, I'll just do that. All right. Here we go. 
This is for you, saucy chicken nuggets. So I hope you're listening and you didn't like go and just start eating food or leave me here. Oh, I didn't tune it. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, guys. Here we go. This is for you, saucy chicken nugget. I promise everybody we'll get right back to talking uh, shop with the boys. He's got to fulfill this. We'll be right back. It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Oh, God damn it. It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Oh, wait, wait. It's not, it's not right yet. Hold on. Sorry, guys. It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Tacos. No need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining tacos. It's raining tacos <laughs> Out in the streets Tacos All you can eat Lettuce and shells Cheese and meat It's raining tacos Hold on, I gotta go back I gotta scroll down Yum, yum, yummity yum It's like a dream Yum, yum, yummity yum More sour cream <laughs> It's raining tacos. Ooh, tacos. Ooh, tacos. Ooh, it's raining tacos. It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Tacos. No need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining tacos. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Saucy, that was for you. I love you. Thanks for hanging out, Saucy. You better be in chat. <laughs> that better not, better not be just out here <laughs> embarrassing just... the shit out of myself. All right. Okay. Now, thank you for the biddies. Yeah, mighty, mighty. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. All right. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> by the way that that's very generous oh saucy thank you so much for the biddies you you didn't have to do that i was just joking that that you know that you you spent five thousand channel points on that you aunt Susie eq thank you so much i appreciate the biddies okay now that was fun i i i uh i loved the song we Oddly enough, we had a uh, last Friday. We came up with a, a a theme song that was Taco Friday. So I was just like, "Is he about to sing the Taco Friday song?" Dude, this is great. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> Fucking Taco. What's the Taco Friday song? I mean, you know, it's um, it, it was just something silly we were doing before stream, and Dog said Taco Friday, like in the, in in. A beat and I was just beat. laughing because it's obviously not Taco Tuesday. And <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. It's kind of, oh, you know what? Someone was asking about wide open spaces. A risky biscuit. Uh, something happened with wide open spaces incident. Is I don't know a- if there was an incident, but it was. But that's one that like Logan. Oddly enough, I'm a, like I said, I grew up listening to a lot of '90s country and stuff, and so uh, you know, and my my mother sang in the car, and so I had this. I have this affinity for the, you know, country, the the uh, female vocalist, and Dixie Chicks was like one of my favorites. And I recall just being like, oh, I kind of know. I feel like I could probably pull that song up and found the right key for myself. And just like that was like one of my favorite songs to play for the longest time. And it would be funny to, you know, that and Shania Twain. We do a we do a really cool version of uh, that. Don't impress me. That me. don't impress me much. <laughs> Poopy fart? What is that? That's saucy chicken. Okay, poopy fart. There you go. Hey, that's what you spent. Hey, that's, hey I, the, I, I applaud someone spending at least 100 chat points to say poopy fart. Well, that's what actually what happens when you eat too many saucy chicken nuggets. <laughs> that's true. That's actually true. I got poopy farts going on. All right, all right. All right. Jeez Louise. <laughs> all right. This is, this is going way off the rails here. So uh, I'm just curious. Oh, wait, wait. Did we finish the incident? I mean, there, I thought there was an incident. 
Uh, yeah, there's so many incidents that have happened, especially the ones with poopy pants. I can't even tell No, you. I mean and, about the wide open spaces. <laughs> somebody, now, I'm not sure. Who, who, uh, was there somebody in particular that asked that question? I think it was. I think it was Harma Girl, uh, or maybe it was. I don't know. Well, you know what? Oh, it, it was Harma Girl. I don't think there was an incident, but oh, it was it was a great moment. Wide open spaces was a great risky biscuit. Uh, oh, moment. I thought incident. that was a question. Oh, incident. Yeah, no, no. no it, it, it was a yeah. moment. It was a yeah. moment, which is dear to my heart. Yes, they, make this heart happy. Thank we you, Harma Girl. I, they they really appreciate that. Uh, so. <laughs> So then, after the after your 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 stint with the touring and with the with you know oh yeah I guess open, I never made it past that no that's fine I, I never usually then the story I'll be like and that brings us up to now yeah but it, I haven't gotten there yet I haven't brought us up to now and that was to be honest it's my bad no no um, we it's so, okay <laughs> we're here now baby we're here now so um, so so basically uh, I was actually playing on a rock boat like a cruise ship. Um, with Stokeswood, we, we played with, the like this kind of like this thing called the rock boat, which is like a nineties band revival. It was like with some, s- with sister some, Hazel, right? Yeah. It was sister Hazel's boat, but there would be like all these nineties bands there and stuff. And then new bands. And we were one of them and we went on a few of them. And, uh, I met the bass player for Logan's band and he was like, Oh, I'm in this, I'm in this new band. We became friends. And he's like, I'm in this band and I love the Stokeswood stuff. Maybe you can work with us to record or whatever. So they ended up hiring me to record their album. Mm. And Stokeswood was not necessarily slowing down at all. I mean, we kind of were not on the road as much as we were. Mm. We were playing more like targeted shows as opposed to just grinding out the road all the time. Um, And so I had more time to be in town to record stuff. Um, And so I recorded their band. Logan and I became friends uh, from that whole experience, basically. Uh, and then uh, mm-hmm. after we got that done, we did one more Stokeswood album uh, that we had been working on for a while. We released that at the beginning of 2019, mm. and that was that was pretty much the end of Stokeswood. Wow. And so uh, at a certain point, uh, uh, I got the gig, you know, playing uh, our, my regular Sunday night gig, and I had I was gonna the lead singer of of Stokeswood. I originally had him doing it, but he kind of called out a bunch. And I was like, Logan, I, you know, I don't want to sing all the time. So, like, can you come sing in this band? Uh, and I had Dog on drums. Uh, I had the the other bass player who originally played with us before, Rashad. And then he did the same thing where he was calling out a lot and, and getting Rashad to sub in for him. Yeah. And finally, I was like, well, Rashad, you're the bass player. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I, you know, that just is what it is. Like, yeah. you know, you know all the songs who, now. Whoever shows up the most, you know, <laughs> is, is going to be the person that gets the gig. They're in. Yeah. <laughs> Show up. <laughs> you're in. And I kind of like purposefully ran uh, the, the, the whole gig like a little bit different than what a lot of people would expect a, a gig to be run like. I, I encourage us to. When we first did it, it was supposed to be sort of an open mic kind of thing where you had people like play with you. And I was like, no, no, no yeah, we're like, I was like, no, nah, I'm done with that shit. <laughs> we're going to play. I was like, I don't want to be up and down. like if, if I'm sitting there in the bar anyways, like I want to be playing. I, I have no interest in just like sitting around watching other people play, to be honest. I'm, I'm... <laughs> yeah, he's not, the, he's not the schmoozing type. He wants to be on stage. doing. Yeah, I want to be on stage playing. And so, uh, so we just kept playing and kept playing and kept playing. I mean, uh, and that was kind of how we used to be called Chief Wiggum. <laughs> Simpson so, fans. Uh, oh, I'm a I'm a huge. So so we used to, we used to be Chief Wiggum until all our social media kept getting taken down. Oh shit. For, for copyright claims we would have dope flyers with like cheap wiggum pictures all over them, man and it was so dope and then it was just but, but I have to say that that fuck you fallout boy. I have to say that if you were in if you were in a, a loud bar and somebody's like what's your band name and you're like cheap wiggum they'd be like what you know what I'm saying? there's nothing about like wiggum isn't a word they, they would just be like what the hell are these guys talking about right so changing it to risky biscuit which is hilarious because dog and rashad were like that is the dumbest fucking name i've ever heard in my life and i was like well can you guys come up with something better that's like that's not too like heavy it's not too serious because we're like a drunken bar band we're there to party we're not like a 
<laughs> we're not like taking yeah. it like too seriously we're not doing original stuff so i don't want it to sound like too heavy yeah. Um, yeah. and so i was like sorry this is what it is and then we've gotten so much positive feedback from the name risky biscuit it's 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 a, it's kind of a joke at this point yes yeah. we we had a um I, I was dating a girl at the time and she she was uh, had a really thick southern accent and she was riding with us to the gig one night and we were talking about it. And she just happened to say, risky biscuit, like some funny way. And, and Justin and I were literally dying. And then, <laughs> like he said, that we, you know, we showed up and we told the boys and they were just like, that's a fucking stupid name. <laughs> and then I was like, well, it's sticking. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, so that was kind of how risky biscuit came to be. Yeah. Oh. And, and so when, uh, so yeah, that, that kind of brings us up to now. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, that's that's kind of like the it's kind of whole thing. As far as like my musical influences over the years, I'm a '90s kid. I'm I'll be 40 in January. Mm. Um, so you know, I kind of scaled with the '90s as, as far as my teenage years. So basically, wanted to be in Nirvana yeah. and 311 and Rage Against the Machine, and I love you know Fashion Nugget by Cake and Blind Melon Soup and and just Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, the whole yeah. thing. I, that was like that was like my whole thing. Uh, Tool, Dog, and I used to essentially just be in a Tool cover band, uh, and and you know like Primus and any kind of like weird we like weird dark stuff and and uh, and and if you listen to Contraption, you'll see exactly yeah, what that exactly what we were listening to by the type of music we played. Um, and then uh, I kind of for a long time through the two thousands was just doing my own thing. We, I, I had bands I listened to, but I kind of just listened to old stuff all the time that I already loved. Uh, and then it wasn't until probably like five or six years ago that I was like, you know what? I've got to like find, there's good music out there. Like I have to go find stuff. And I, and I realized that I started really concentrating on more like singer songwriter uh, kind of stuff, but weird stuff too. Like if something's too normal, like I, I can't see, I was never as much as I love John Mayer as a person. <laughs> And, and as a guitar player, like, I think he's super fucking cool. Yeah. And as a guitar player, he's so good, man. I was, and, and I don't hate any of his songs. Mm -hmm. I just never really liked him either. They were, a lot of times they were just like too adult contemporary. Yeah, yeah. For me. And that's, I'm not shitting on him. No, by no, saying no, no. That. I was it's the just, same way, man. I felt the same yeah. way, for real. And, like, and, when he and, first and, came out, when I was first hearing, you know, and I'm like, get this fucking dipshit yeah, out of here. <laughs> no, no, for real, for real. I mean, uh, my, the first song that I heard by him was Neon. So, my, my <laughs> Leon, thing. Leon. But if you look up how he plays that fucking song on the guitar, he's a, yeah, nobody, he's uh, nobody was doing but it. But the dude. thing is, is like, I was I never denied that like the music like he was a good guitar player, that wasn't like the thing. It was just like the songwriting. And, but this is just my own personal taste. Like I know that I'm usually an outlier and this kind of stuff. It's just different. It, it, it kind of goes to show how different it, it is between Justin and I's mm. you know musical influence with just a being um, you know three and a half maybe four years apart to. And even demographically, I mean, where Justin grew up and where I grew up were maybe only like 20 or 30 minutes away. So the the year span and, you know, the, the distance, that's how different I mean, Georgia I, is. I'm a, city, I'm a city kid. I was pretty yeah. much like in this, like close to the city always. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. Logan was kind of like out in the in the sticks. Yeah, out in the sticks. <laughs> Living out in the sticks. Yeah. Uh, we both got a redneck family, though. Um, <laughs> it's so, so my so I ended up I ended up uh, I, I always liked weirder stuff, and there was a lot of cool singer songwriter stuff from the '90s that was amazing. But then I kind of stuck with all that, and then then I got into like uh, you know we listened to stuff like Whitest Boy Alive, and, and yeah, that stuff is so good. And uh, uh, Guggenheim Grotto <laughs> is like it's a killer, but this we the, all this little this weird shit, and then. I got in. Then I found. Um, uh, I love all the Fleet Foxes stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I got like really into that, and va I love Vampire Weekend when they came out. I'm a huge Vampire Weekend. Yeah, fan. that I whole thought. that whole Brooklyn scene too. I mean, I know I don't yeah. think Fleet Foxes was out of Brooklyn, but like that whole Brooklyn scene. Yeah, there's Seattle the for sure. Yeah, the Fleet Foxes, Seattle. But man, Vampire Weekend with the first time I heard Cousins, mm. I was like, this is some innovative shit. This yeah, is some man. cool stuff, man. They were. They're like on a different thing now, and I and I love it that they're being so weird and quirky, right? And, and getting away with it, and actually being it's popular. It's not just like, 
oh, this this will never make it. Vampire Weekend was huge, right? Especially for a time when um when when I think Vampire Weekend and like even the Strokes, because I think Vampire Weekend came out a little around then, but a little bit later. But like that whole movement, that whole New York garage movement, and then going into uh-huh. the indie thing that. Because uh, we were coming out of sort of like the Britney Spears in sync and like TRL. It was super world. polished pop, mm-hmm. yeah. Like. And then so when you had this like garagey, this like, you know, we're, we're pl- making weird sounds and getting ethereal and, and, and you know, have intelligent lyrics and not just fucking right. baby hit me one more time. You know, it was like yeah. really talking about People real shit. It. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, me too, man. I, I latched right onto that shit, man. Because I was I, just So like, I ended up, I, I guess like a few years ago, um, because that was 2000, early to like maybe 2009, 2010, mm. uh, you know, so shit, it's like, ten, you know, 10 to 12 years ago when all the, all that stuff was coming up, right. Vampire Weekend was getting big. Um, and then I got it, I got really into the, all the father John Misty stuff, who I just knew was the drummer of Fleet Foxes. And then I finally heard oh. his stuff and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I was like, this guy's fucking murdering it. Yeah, he's it's out so there. so smart. Dude. It's so much fun. I didn't know he was the drummer for Fleet Foxes. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. It's like, he's a very talented musician. It's like sure. super quirky and like witty. And, and it was just like everything that I was like, oh, I, I live. And then my, my latest obsession is Andy Schaff. Mm, I don't know. Uh, if you've never listened to it, it's Andy Schaff, S-H-A-U-F. And he... As far as I'm concerned, put out the best album of 2020. He's like Canadians, he, man. They really know how to write some songs. He, he's like making the guys making like real albums about like he's got an album called The Party, mm-hmm. which, the which every great. every single song is from a different person's perspective at one party. Oh, dope! And he's making albums like that. What, you know what, and, what kind of what kind of be poop poop poop? Thanks, but saucy chicken nugget. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of what kind of music is it? Um, uh so it it's it's kind of this uh it's a definitely an indie rock uh feel um like that, i don't even know what that means anymore yeah, but, and... but but it's got very like 70s tones and, yeah. he, and andy, tight tight drum andy shop actually re- records everything himself mm, and okay. he, he, produces, he uh produces the entire thing and, re- and does every instrument himself so everything you hear is just exactly what he would do he doesn't even Nobody else plays on the records. <laughs> and he's a he's a great drummer and everything, so it, it, it works out really really well. He's just some skater kid from from Canada. Yeah, he basically he started out as like a drummer in like uh, Christian punk pop bands, and then turned out that he's like one of the coolest songwriters ever. Very uh very Elliot Smith type vibes. On a okay, lot of okay, and dude. So, fucking... and that's the same with Father John Misty too. It's yeah, like, he does have. There's a, a lot of. Like that kind of stuff wouldn't been around if Elliot Smith hadn't been doing what he was doing right. in two thousand. Right, you're right, uh, man. Elliot Smith, he fucking paved the way for so many people because so, so many, many people just fucking bite off of his style. Like, and he would. And, and what a style a, to bite a, off. It's right. like guitar playing, man. Like, in my opinion, a big part of it was just how eloquently he pulled off a lot of the guitar parts, yeah. you know, when you go back and listen to how memorable some of those are. Cause Justin at the time when he, when he was really like building with Andy Schaaf and going back and listening to Elliot Smith, he was doing a lot of the, the finger picking style, showing me the technique that he was using and to be able to pull off that kind of stuff with the precision he was doing is, is really, really difficult. He's, you know what I he's mean? probably like people in the, who, you know, write songs and listen to that kind of stuff. No, Elliot Smith, but it's not like he's, it's not like he was ever really hugely popular outside of people who don't know or who know good will hunting. Yeah, it's like it's like people, <laughs> it's like people that enjoy Ween. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Ween is like a, a musician's band because, which by the way, one of my favorite albums is Ween's country album. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. We do cover Piss Up a Rope. So, oh, nice. I I haven't heard their country album. I've only heard a very Ooh. small select few cuts, but. I when, it. when Fantastic Plastic stops in to our uh, to our uh, channel, they always ask for "Piss Up a Rope." The, <laughs> la- the, la- the last time they were like, "Is this song appropriate?" And I was like, "Well, they they were like, they like I for- I forgot how." like inappropriate (laughs) (laughs) those guys are like the weirdest deep cut stuff man they like they're like they're naming like these 80s 
uh, punk bands that that only were cool in like Brooklyn for like two years. You know what I mean? It's like those were our biggest influences. It's like, all right, I get it. But but you got. But I get it when you hear their music and you see their vibe. Like when you just when you're ingesting your vibe, you know that all came from the nerdiest shit that in the fucking oh, world. When he was, when he was talking about, because uh, I listened to that interview. By the way, you did a great job. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, I appreciate it. They uh, when they were talking about their Devo yeah. obsession, yeah. I was like, yes, absolutely. That's exactly what's going on with them. That, that's fucking awesome. Right. Yeah, man. But yeah, it's... they're obviously influenced by Devo. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I mean, like, uh, you know, the funny thing is, if if you go back and watch interviews with Kurt Cobain, he was influenced by Devo. Yeah. <laughs> Nirvana, Kurt Cobain wanted wanted to be. A, they, he considered himself a new wave band. <laughs> what? If you go back and like and, even like early, so you go back and like listen. Like... You go back and listen to like Incesticide, oh. and the songs on there they're actually covering. They actually cover. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they cover a Devo song on there. Do they? That they like Kurt Cobain wanted to be like the Pixies and Devo. Yeah, I remember the Pixies, but I didn't. I, I forgot about the Devo. I... I've seen like all the documentaries. I think I even read their book, but read the book, but like you know all those details. He just it was like his interpretation of what new wave was. And yeah, it, it wasn't wave. That's right. why it says like poly new wave poly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like so they did. And that's what the title is though, because he was like, oh, we're we're pretty much a new wave band, and everybody's like, yeah, not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't hear it. <laughs> I don't hear what you're hearing, bro. But, <laughs> whispering glitter what's up i just want to say hi to whispering glitter our our our, our, sh- our screenshot photographers in the house thank you so much boo thanks for being here lisa flynn i like how you. on the screen it looks like we're being recorded by a potato i yeah, know yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what happened like even on my screen it just looks like this like i don't know it's, i'm sorry guys just how we look in real life yeah we're all <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, everything you see on our stream is just computer generated graphics. Yeah, yeah you can do a lot with with computers these you days. You really can, you really can. can. This is all just Snapchat filters. What's gonna happen is now we're gonna we're gonna have a stream where we interview you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, oh, brother. Anytime. Coffee talk with Logan. Yeah, coffee talk. Coffee talk. Well, that's what the 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 actually the plastics. That's what they did because uh they they're they're uh. Their act is so intense, and they're jumping up and down and doing all that shit that they can't. They want to do more days a week, and so this last Wednesday they uh, they started a talk show, and it's just as weird as their live performances and stuff. So it's just uh, I I love it. I, I I my hats off and respect to them, especially on their because those guys are just growing and to oh they're awesome yeah, and, yeah they're and, very original and awesome. and to. Uh, to put yourself out there in that way where like you know you're in the middle of this growth spurt, you know what I mean? Like they 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 have been just they're on their way and to 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 be like, "Hey, we're going to add a day, but we're going to change everything you know and love about us and we're going to do it like this." And well, to do it, it successfully. I mean, they we took thought a about that too. And we're like, "Once we reach partner, <laughs> Like, yeah, we're yeah, doing whatever we want. That's yeah, whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. Um, we've already talked about like different things that we can do um, as far as just like uh, talking about Rashad doing like tea time with Rashad because he's oh. like really, really into like making tea and that kind of <laughs> thing. I mean, but people would hang out for it because it's fucking awesome. It's cool. And we also <laughs> we also want to, you know, give have segments where we kind of give back to our fans and the people that are enjoying it, the people that. You know, are in our Discord and participating mm. all the time, the mods and stuff. Yeah. We're, you know, because we are brand new to this, we're definitely having to try to figure out how to incorporate those things that we love to do anyway. Yeah. Uh, and giving back to the community because, uh, you know, once again, Justin already knew about Twitch, but I, I did not. And when, when we were getting into it, I have, I have just been immersed in thinking about how to be be more interactive with uh, uh, with the audience because they're not in front of us, but they kind of are, you right. know, um, and, but they're also dedicated. I mean, you know, we're getting, there's one gentleman who comes in from Germany and he, when he tunes in, he's waking up 
Yeah. And we, you know, well, of course, we're just like about to go to bed, but we he's there every time and he says hello and he's engaged in the chat. And we just want to say thank you for those people that are out there doing that. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, that, that's insane. I mean, like Matt, you guys know Matt Suarez. Um, oh, yeah. He, Oh, yeah, yeah, really well. Yeah. He was saying, he's like, you know, Twitch is like everything I've always wanted out of music, but I didn't know I wanted it like this. Like, you know, he's like, I'm getting what I want out of it, but like, you know, there's no way of knowing that this is how you're going to get it. And it's just. We, it, yeah, <laughs> we had uh, saw the very first, like one of his, his first streams mm. and we had just finished and I was just kind of combing through and saw him and we we jumped in and started talking to him and he mentioned that he was like i don't really know if this is going to work out yeah. and we just in his chat we're just immediately just like do not stop doing it like this because this is this seems to be we way. were like don't stop the, the stream and <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> so matt, matt's really cool what well, i you know i was in the middle of like putting all this stuff together which is a lot of stuff to like set the whole band up yeah i actually wanted to talk about that um just uh um on uh, um so you guys I, I know i just interrupted what i was no, gonna ask you, but but i kind of want to frame it because did you guys come to twitch uh uh because of the pandemic it was that yes. why you jumped on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, so so the first time I got on Twitch is because I was looking up uh, a, a deck for Hearthstone uh, because I'm a I, I play I play video games. I'm a, I'm, I'm a gamer. Yeah. I've had, well, you know, we're, we're streaming off of my gaming computer. Oh, nice. <laughs> Not, yeah, um, that, but that works perfectly. It works perfectly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to when it decides to work perfectly. Yeah, it, but it <laughs> we we haven't had once we've been able to stream every single time off of it. You know, I. I had bought a decent graphics card and stuff like that. It was good for gaming, and if it's good for gaming, it's good for everything else. Oh yeah. Um, so I played a lot of like Overwatch. Um, I used to play Fortnite with my kid. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We get together and like play. And I had a whole. This whole room was a gaming room. Nice. Uh, slash slash studio. I just wasn't doing a lot of studio work at the time, and so I kind of I was. It was mostly you were recording yourself basically, but it was yeah, like this. It, it was mostly like a gaming room. And, and somebody could sleep on the futon we had in here. Yeah. Uh, and that was basically it. And so I knew about Twitch just from watching gamers. Uh, and then when the pandemic hit, you know, obviously the first couple of weeks, everybody was just like, well. well like, once again, we tried, we tried Facebook, you know, yeah. we tried Instagram. Well, but, we tried but, all. but even like, even getting to trying Facebook and Instagram, there was a minute where everybody was just like, okay, nobody has any idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. We don't, what do we do from here? And and then we kind of saw, okay, oh, well, people are, everybody's just kind of doing some live streams right now on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. So we're like, okay, well, I had fortunately bought a webcam that I had never used. Damn. Uh, the, the Logitech, you know, 922 or right. whatever. The I one. Yeah, the one, the right? one, yeah. The one. But I had bought it on Amazon two years before for thirty-five bucks. Wow. Okay, and it had just been sitting on my computer, never used it once, and I was like, Yeah, because I'm like, he he used it to show me how it worked one time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, look, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Hey, just in case, and so so I basically already had here the stuff to stream with, yeah. uh, and it was already set up, and then I started being like, I'm just so. I'm just so compulsive and obsessive about stuff that I was like, fuck this. We're getting on Twitch. Yeah. I was like, I was like this Facebook thing, you know, what are you going to get your friends and family, which is nice. Yeah. Not, that's the thing wrong but, with that. Well, but I was like, you're never going to grow an actual crowd. You know? And I was like, if we, if we want to get on Twitch, then we have to start now and go all in. Mm -hmm. And that was the immediate allure too, was the fact that, that that was one of the selling points for me whenever we were getting into it was Justin was like, we're only talking to the people that already knew us. And then we only had 250 people even on our like Facebook page. Right. So we're only broadcasting to them. And I remember there was one night in particular where we streamed for both platforms, both Twitch and Facebook. And we, were Facebook's comments were overtaking Twitch's comments and OBS uh, when we were using 
a different, maybe a different platform at the time too. But, uh, but we were missing out on all the Twitch fans and it seemed like it was really hurting yeah. that it was disconnecting. And, and Justin looked at me after that stream and was like, we will never cross platform again. And I was like, I will never like, do that. I was again. like, I would like fuck Facebook. And I was really scared because at the time people were Venmoing us yes. and, and sending us money and yes. the money there. Um, but he, but Justin really was adamant about the, uh, longevity of what Twitch could provide. And if you go back and look at some of our earlier clipped videos of us doing our Twitch stream, man, it was very basic. We were getting very hammered. We were playing for hours. I mean, nine, we did like a, we did a nine hour, stream. Nine, nine, nine hour stream one time, just the two of us. And, and, you know, got a lot of follows from that night. Yeah, it was it was a good night. It was a lot of raids. Nice. <laughs> cool. But but once again, we as it progressed and developed, and we started to really think about the structure of how we were putting this show, this show together. It it made it it made it really easy to accept that playing live. This is what it is for us now, mm. uh, and we really we really want to embrace it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that 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 Facebook thing is really weird because I still have friends who who are still doing the restreaming to everything, and I'm just like, man, I don't, you know, like, because if you look at the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was doing well, right? All of our musician friends, you saw them all on Facebook, they're streaming, you know, and fucking killing it. People making rent with the the donations coming in, but. You know, sure. after a few weeks, you know, after a couple People weeks, disillusioned with it, and like the because family... of Facebook, because it's like we are always on Facebook. Mm -hmm. People are always on Facebook. They never leave it. They and and of course, you know, due to the controversy of Facebook anyway and its nature, it didn't seem like it was really catering to anybody but like a mass corporate sort of thing mm -hmm. and with twitch it, even the music section of twitch the most i've seen is like maybe like 40 maybe 50 60 000 people on just the music page at one time mm -hmm. and that right there is enough for everybody that's on twitch right now i mean even on the nights that we feel are even the most competitive with channels we still feel great about having 50 people in front of us because they're engaged they're interested in what we're doing, and, and it means a lot more than just clickbait when it comes down to Facebook. So, you know, that was, once again, I, I really do. When we talk to our musician friends, we absolutely advocate. We'll even message them immediately when we see them on Facebook. And we're like, please, I'm like, get off of call us and let's <sighs> talk about if you on Twitch. And I've had some friends, really great, talented musician friends that are – that that just don't want to put in the effort of the time. I, um, I, but we do have a channel that we wanted to plug, and that's who, our friend Jeff Spearco's. Who is uh, it? Spearco Rocks. It's called Spearco Rocks. You know how to spell but, it? Can you put it in the? You sure. Know, uh, it's yeah. Like it's like a. Yeah, he, he's gonna type it in the chat. Right cool. Now. Please do. Hey, what's uh, up, Outshot? Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for stopping by. The Risky Biscuits are my homies. Outshot. Oh man, Outshot, what's up, dude? I saw you. Where were you at uh, last night? Was it last night? I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> I saw you. <laughs> um, let me see if I can't uh, find his page real quick. Please do shout out. Um, I, yeah, he's a local Atlanta guy, but it was actually an original member of Risky Biscuit when we were Chief Wiggum. He oh, would okay. show up. And play, he would show up and play with us every single Sunday. Is he the keys uh, or? He's violin. He's a oh, virtuoso. He's a oh, songwriter. Like he, I mean, he has this great um, Jackson Brown sort of timbre of his voice. It, 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 he's a phenomenal, phenomenal musician. And we, uh, we were just—I was just on the phone with him last week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just on the phone with him last week talking about his setup, and he had to stop me. It was just like, all right, dude, I think I've got <laughs> enough to work on right now before. So we're really into talking about it. We're really into, you know expanding the community because it really is giving the fans an opportunity to, to be a part of this and it's so cool it's just so cool yeah man um i i, I try talking to my friends i'm trying to tell them to, to go on but there's so many of them who are just like oh no and then you know like they see it's too complicated or they do it for like a week and and right and, I had, we had some people do it for like a few streams i'm like no you gotta it, it, this isn't this is a slow burn this isn't right. like a you know this isn't just like getting on it doesn't go well the first few times so you give up like 
you might as well not have done it. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> if you're going to do that, you basically just wasted three days of doing, of doing it's nothing. True. It's because, true. Because I looked back at some of our early streams, and and you know the first couple weeks that we were playing, we would have four people, mm -hmm. and and that just is what it is. It's fine. Those four people were awesome. Hell yeah. And, and then you still pop in every once in a while. Yeah, and and we still we have people that were one of the some of the original people that still are watching our stream they're like hey well, we've been here since day one kind of stuff yeah mm -hmm. and, and we but what happened is we immediately got in the community um of other streamers and started being like oh what's up and mm -hmm. then we we started making friends and, and started hopping to other people's streams and and you know everybody in the music community like lifts each other up yeah so it, it's it's not competitive like you go in the gaming community and like <laughs> It's slim pickings around there, but like it is. the chances of you like getting, you know, it in the gaming community, they're like, if you get 50 followers a month, then you're killing it. Wow. Right? Yeah. And, you know, you could easily get 50 followers as a, doing music because <laughs> everybody's like, hell yeah, this guy's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Uh, and you can do it relatively quick too. So it's like, it, it's, it's kind of like, I still take cues from the gaming community for this reason. They've been at it for a long time. For sure. And there's things that they have kind of figured out that, like, I feel like the music scene should actually kind of, like, pull from. Yeah. Like what? As far as, like, well, as far as, like, think about it. The gaming community, like, invented chat. You know what I'm saying? Right. This, this was, like, it was their thing first. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, like, to have the, the big autonomous, like, these are our people. These are our chat. This, yeah. is, this is my group this is, of people. This is my community of friends. You know, they kind of yeah. set the standards for like what Twitch was going to become mm. because, you know, think about the music community on Twitch has grown recently, but, you know, I didn't know about the music community on Twitch. And it's two still pretty low. And, two years ago. And, uh, you know, Rashad, our bass player, he definitely talks a lot about He's been watching Twitch for two or three years, but just lurking, like, you know, mm -hmm. finding people to watch. Maybe he'll watch some video games. Maybe he'll watch somebody do something else that, that uh, you know, that he stumbled upon. But he would talk about how that felt really like, like the people that were in that chat were his friends. Yeah. You know, and uh, and now that everybody's stuck inside they're at, you know, and they're used to being online friends with people. This is giving them an opportunity to have something a little bit more wholesome that's narrow you know like once again about you know a, a lot of our friends and family that are on facebook the reason they don't want to go away from it is because they've been fed that whole thing yeah. but the people that we've noticed that have switched over they're like this is so cool like this is this is not i don't i'm not inundated with ads i'm not inundated with uh you know political views and just and but it, but it, this is a band that i like um and these are the people that i know i'm, I'm not seeing them every week you know mm -hmm. um we have one mod in particular we want to give a shout out to is Lemon Pie Firefly. And the first time that she popped into our stream, we came up with this like little jingle. And and for the longest time, we would every time she showed up, we would have that jingle for her. We still and, pretty much do. And we still pretty much do it. But <clears throat> she but she is an she's become an uh, essential part to what we're doing and we and all the mods are now. Like yeah. every single one of the mods that comes in, we we are baffled that they would want to, you know, dedicate their time while we're playing to, to helping. Um, uh, so we, once again, this is such a beautiful community of people and it's only getting bigger um, and it's only getting better, uh, you know, and, especially for the musicians in this, in, in this industry. You just made me want to shout out my mod, shout out uh, my mod, Wallace Nelson. I don't know if you're still in here, buddy. And of course, shout out, Rain and Gotta Steve. Mods. Dude, yeah. mod love for real, man. Like oh, real. if I if I didn't have them, I would especially in the in the first few streams, I would have just been just There's running blindly in the dark, bro. It was just the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah outshot uh, lemon pie does rock. Uh, I mean uh, the outshot rocks too. Yeah, the outshot, outshot. rocks too. I'm filling in my coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fine. Do you think? Oh, uh, so, what were some of the what were some of the technical issues guys were running into at the beginning of all of it? Like, what what what? How did you figure out what your setup and how it was all going to be? Because you guys have a really clean, beautiful looking setup as it is now. So, 
<laughs> well, it looks it looks good on camera, but it doesn't necessarily translate behind the scenes. Um, we were having uh, internet issues. We were having. Uh, we never really had processing issues because, once again, Justin's had computer. Thing, yeah. yeah, he he was kind of pretty much ready to go. When we when we had to start filing for unemployment, mm. um, we basically just used all of that money to help build our credit mm-hmm. and to help and and just basically dump it back into this stream. Mm-hmm. Um, so we bought cameras, and then you know Justin was really really on the pulse. He's he's already kind of compulsive with buying things anyway online. Mm-hmm. You know we we figured out how to kind of manipulate the Amazon system, nice. and Justin had ordered from Amazon. Justin does not really like to leave the house, and so you know it makes it easy for him to order the things that he wants online, and he's able to shop like he wants to, and he's very he, that's one of the shining things that has been able to make this possible is justin's compulsive nature to shop um <laughs> so yeah so uh but but he was piecing things together just bit by bit he would always have some new information and any hiccup that he ran across he would go to twitch and find somebody somebody doing the music thing and ask them what they did there was there was a gentleman uh, that we met one of the like the third or fourth stream that we did, and his name is TJ. Mm. And I can't, uh, he has a number at the end of his uh, thing, but it's T E E J A. Um, and we went to his stream, and he didn't have very many people, and he was just kind of like playing music production stuff. But he started talking to Justin about how to hook up and uh, the PC side of it because we were always using Mac. Right. Um, and and once that happened, and we realize that that was how the community was going to be we you know you have to kind of dig you have to do your research well, it, was, it was kind of funny because that the guy I'm, um i'm a huge i'm a huge researcher like i'm like checking prices on stuff every day i'm like tracking like okay i'm like well there's always these you know these these times where a price on something on Amazon, if you keep track of it, it'll jump down for like three hours, <laughs> and you and, you know. And so I keep track of that stuff, and then I'm also like watching YouTube videos of stuff. And I, the guy saw that it was only like our third or fourth stream, and he was like, "Oh, what you need to do is this and this and this." And he's like, and I was like, "Yeah, I've actually already got that. I, <laughs> um, you know, I know about the Osio Pro, and I was able to." Uh, to get the crack for it, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah. and, and I already had studio equipment, right. so it wasn't like that far of a leap. It was like, yeah, if I can get this stuff in the OBS, <laughs> <laughs> then we're, then we're off. We're flying. Which, which is another trip on its own. So, so, so you guys were doing the two computer system, right? You're not yet. No, oh, no, 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 no. At that point, that was just one. Okay, yeah. so yeah. at the okay, so were you guys doing like the b- voice banana clip or whatever? Were you trying to so, route? So, <laughs> so, I uh, so I was, always, I was always running my. I was always running my studio off of my Mac. Yeah, um, my laptop. Right, right. Like, like but, every other fucking music producer, fucking right, production um, guy. But not anymore. Right. Um, no, I mean, when you do the research, when you do the research, you're like, oh my god, fuck you, Mac. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I've been running off Mac since 2007. With Me, my too. Music stuff. Me too. Me too, man. And uh, when I so I built my gaming PC, but that was just my gaming PC. I still use my laptop to do music. Yeah. And then once all this came about, I was like, dude, I'm installing because I have a Pro Tools HD system. I've mm. got like a, I've got like top of the line. I use like an Omni with a with an analog 16 by 16 HD IO. Okay. I have a I have an actual like deep DSP card. Like I I. I spent way too much fucking money yeah, on that. You spent a lot of money. Yeah, it was, like, yeah, it was like a car payment. It was like a car payment. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and so, but then I was just using Ableton to do our stuff. Mm. So right now, what I do is I, is I, I'm using um, I, <laughs> I have interfaces galore in mm. front of me right now. <laughs> but I have the Arturia um, Audio Fuse okay. um, Studio, which was really really new at the time, but I already liked the company, and I kind of like was like this kind of looks perfect for what we're doing right now it has the right number of inputs uh and then there's because at the time we didn't even think about the band we didn't didn't even know how to think about the band. Mm. and there was an expansion to it and so i actually have the expansion of the adat expansion to that and that's feeding into our to one computer 
um, where Ableton is doing its thing, right? right? And then I have an entire headphone mix um, because the Arturia, um, basically like eight pre is what it's called. It's got eight pre's. It also has analog outputs. Oh, and I route those into um, a separate headphone thing. Like a headphone amp. A headphone mm-hmm. amp. And within Ableton, I have everybody has their own um, connection to their own headphone mix. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I, use, I, use, I just got these little MIDI controllers that they don't make anymore. And I mapped them to Ableton. So now these control what you can turn everything on and off. Whoa. And you can control everybody has their own separate headphone mix. Yeah. And turn the reverb on and off over here. And then basically like Justin will monitor the main out. You know, he'll he'll he he monitors what the actual mix sounds like and then once he knows that it's kind of level and set and people in the chat have already, you know, kind of given us some feedback. He just switches over, and then the as as of each stream, because it gets dialed in more and more and more and more, all you gotta do is save it, and so Justin no longer has to like monitor. We're able to really get up and running at a very quick speed whenever yeah. we're ready to do it. You know, and it, it was it was once again none of this stuff happened all at once. Right, right. I got this. I got the Arturia Studio because I, I at the time. Um, I wasn't using my Pro Tools stuff to hook it up because you have to hook it up to the card, but I didn't have the card in my thing yet, so I just used Ableton. And so I was like, I need to get this. So I, I got the main Arturia audio interface, <clears throat> and we were able to run our stuff off of that, two vocals, two guitars. It's got four pre's on it. And then I was able to you know, kind of piece it together, and I switched everything over to my, to, to, uh, my computer, and I started installing the card for the... Pro Tools, I was like, this might work. And I was like, but it would be great if we had another computer to run Ableton off of. Mm-hmm. We were we were experiencing then, some like lag sort of stuff and like, you know, if, latency if, and stuff. If Ableton had to work really hard, the stream might have some cracks and stuff in it. Or yeah. the computer and, might just be like, well, this is too much. Yeah. yeah. Shut down. That never happened. Though. That never happened. The computer never shut down, but there was definitely times when like the music would get intense. You'd open up a plugin or something like that, and it would like, it would like click, and th- there'd be like some noise on the stream, and you'd be like, Ugh. yeah. I mean, once again, <laughs> Justin be having that production and producer mindset was always into making it really, really quality sounding stuff. And yeah. then also beyond quality sound, what you want is ease of use. Yeah. So that when everybody's in here, you don't run into stuff. You that know, takes people out of the moment. Takes people out of the moment. You want right. everybody to just be like, everything's working, and that was the reason why we convinced Dog to get the drum set that he did because he was using a kit that was like a first or second generation Roland set that his his old man had at their at their house, oh, shit. and he would be playing, and the the pads were so just old that. It wouldn't find the triggers, and he would or like if he hit the kick drum and the snare at the same time, one miss. of them was compromised. And he know? and he would be like, he'd be like, well, you know, it's it's good enough, but you could tell like the frustration sometimes because he's such a good. And, drummer. and I was yeah. like, such a good drummer. I was like, I was like, dude, we have to really worry. Like, I want this to be comfortable for us when we're doing it because that's going to translate into better content. Yeah. And so when I got the other computer, so what I do now is I go into Ableton. And I have our whole session set up for Ableton. Whole band's in there. We're going through all the Arturia stuff. And that's mm. being going into Ableton. Then I have two outs going into my Pro Tools interface, which has, like, amazing, you know, uh, digital converters in it. Mm-hmm. And you have also and, have, like, and, so many plugins too, that are... That are well, the, re- the reason I wanted to do it is because I wanted to put mastering plugins mm-hmm. on the master of, my, of going into OBS. Right. But you can't do that without experiencing massive latency uh, in your headphones. Right. So we monitor everything through the first computer in Ableton. So we have the mm. lowest latency possible with nothing on the master track. Okay. Then I send it over to the other computer where Pro Tools is just open. Uh, it's not really running too much except for a, a big mastering plug. I use the Ozone stuff, the Isotope. Ah, I love that. Fuck, dude. I love that. I <laughs> miss that pack, dude. I had, so I, had the, I had the pirated, oh my, and oh, I had like man. the $5,500 um, Waves pack too for Ableton. Yeah, yeah, but that's so all I, gone now. <laughs> well, I, I, I figured out a long time ago that if you really want to plug in, you just have to buy fucking it, buy it. Buy it. You'll be in the middle of a session and some <laughs> update will happen. And then you'll be like, 
well, I can't contact the company nope. about this. <laughs> uh, so I, it's just better off to invest in it in the long run because you end up running into less headaches. And I upgraded the ozone stuff over time. So I buy like one thing on sale and then I would use like an upgrade thing to upgrade it some more. And then the next time a sale would come and now I have like the full versions of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so we go into Pro Tools and then I use the, uh, the Osio Pro program to take the audio from Pro Tools which has massive latency on it now that we don't have to listen to. And we throw that into OBS and then that computer is just running a very simple Pro Tools session uh, where most of the processing is being done by the Pro Tools card, the HD card. Uh, and so the computer can handle OBS without any hit, hiccups or anything weird yeah. going on because yeah. we're not actually like, we're not actually playing a bunch of like instruments into it. It's just right. the one master plugin. Yeah. Uh, and so that's how, that's how we're doing it now. That's how it's going so, through. So wait, wait, I'm, I'm just a little confused still. So you have it running into your Pro Tools that's not running anything, but then your Pro Tools is running into OBS? It or, is via yeah. via Osio Pro, which is like Ozio the Sunflower Pro. thing. Yeah, but that's Ozio the paid Pro. version, right? That's the You had to pay for that one? No, 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 no. It's, it's actually, so some guy some guy made this thing years ago uh-huh. uh, to be able to control Osio type stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's basically just, just a router, you know, yes. just a router, whatever. Um he made it, and then unfortunately, he passed away. Oh. And and you couldn't, uh, you used to have to buy it. Okay. Okay. And so, and if you didn't, it, every thirty seconds or a minute, there would be a, a pause. Right. Right in the audio. Well, his son uh, found out that people loved it so much, and he got some. He got some en- some engineers to like reverse engineer it. Some programmers to reverse engineer it came up with a patch to make it free wow. so if you go to the site you download it and then they also provide you with a patch to make it free and uh and so that'll route you know you can't route your daw into obs with yeah. some other inner you know something to like mediate right. what's right going yeah on. something something needs to, some kind of internal routing yeah we tried voice meter banana clip and i fucking hate that i had no idea like we did a lot of looking around and trying to figure it out, but it's it just was at the end of the day we figured out what works for us for now. But you know, like you guys, it's ever evolving, and that's the thing about streaming and yeah. for anybody getting into streaming. I think one of the best tips that well, my wife gave me, and then I'm starting to hear it more and more from all these streamers who are like, I love that all of a sudden everybody's an expert about growth in in Twitch. You know, like, <laughs> I love that everybody has a YouTube video on how to grow a million things like after a month of being on Twitch. But some right. of, some people do have some good stuff, but like improving your stream by one percent each time, yeah, yeah absolutely. and and to not overwhelm yourself with the possibilities and what you know, because and like even right now I'm still struggling, which I'm sure fucking chat realizes right away is that this I'm still I'm using NDI uh, to transmit your image which is already screwing up the the it's already making it you know laggy but then well, whatever's happening with us too that's making it laggy too so on top of everything is lag on lag and to me I, like it's getting to that at first it wasn't that big of a deal i was like look i'm just glad the fucking thing works i'm glad that i'm, yeah, here. Right. <laughs> I'm glad that i'm getting through streams without sweating on myself and looking like a dipshit those first yeah, few streams when you're looking man. dude those first few strings, you can see the fear in my eyes. I'm just sitting there like, oh, oh, things are going bing, bong, bong, the bing. Why we were getting so drunk. And you're like, we can't let them see the fear in our eyes. You bro. can't let them see. I, I, was, I was just like, there would, there would come times because I was doing like, I was doing like a bunch of looping too. So right. I set up a whole system to be able to like trigger loops and, and we had some cool stuff come up, but man, the Chris Isaac, we'd, uh, we'd run, games, man, we'd run so into, good. we'd run into problems. Uh, and I'd be like, uh, in the moment, I'm like, fuck. Uh, okay, hold on. And then, the, but those most technical error moments, like, they take you out of it, you know, and yeah. if you don't have to deal with them. So, yeah. so what would happen is, is we get done with a stream, and then I would pull up the stream, I'd watch it, and then I'd look at what I had, and I'd start, like, theory crafting, like, how I was going to fix the problems yeah. that had arisen. And then I, I've basically just been doing that for like six months. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but you get used to it. But you get used to that shit. I, I actually thrive in that. I, I thrive in chaos. Hmm. So, I, so for me, um, that's like my least, the least stress that I feel is when I have like something to work on constantly. Yeah. Whereas like the most stress that I feel is when I'm like everything's normal. <laughs> 
what can I be what? busy with? No, I know. I, I get, that, I get, that stresses me out. I'm like, am I, am I selling out? Is, is, am I being too normal now? Like <laughs> I have to like, I have to be like obsessed with something. You, you or almost else. feel like you're you're like playing hooky with your job. Like you almost yeah. feel like you're not doing your job. Like did I, I do? I feel bad. I'm like, what am I over here having fun? <laughs> what am I, some norm, some fucking asshole? <laughs> Doesn't play music. Um, yeah. Outshot uh, had a had a question. Uh, how difficult is it to juggle running the stream? monitoring and adjusting the mix and actually performing and interacting with chat and I, I think we kind of started answering some of those questions I know, yeah yeah but but i mean i love your perspective because he got my perspective because i mean now it's getting a lot better for me but like bing bong bang yeah that's it's still like well, that well, that's I'm, what i was gonna say like yeah it, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like tiny little improvements so at first it's like okay anything could go wrong at any moment and hopefully it doesn't right. and then you get to a point where like Hey, this shit's kind of working now. And so, <laughs> and so you kind of get into a groove and, and, and once you, once your stream is reliably up and running, then it's not hard at all to concentrate on chat and playing and stuff like that. Cause you just know that it's, it's running smoothly. Like things could go wrong, but mm -hmm. it's not just, it's not going to go wrong every time. It's going to be like a fluke. Yeah. Right. If something goes wrong, as opposed to being like, something's going to go wrong every stream. <laughs> yeah. And, and it kind of, and, and once again, it, it definitely helps to have somebody else, um, you know, there to, to kind of talk through and explain. And, and that's one of the bigger things about being on Twitch is that nobody seems to really care about the time you're taking to make it get better. Yeah. Um, you know, like on stream, I mean, we, we've talked about the complex of any way, like learning songs on stream. We've gotten to a point now to where we as musicians would, you know, if we had to sit there and watch a band figure it out, like that might bore some of us or like take us out of that moment. Right. But it seems like the Twitch channel really loves seeing people grow um, as as technical as they possibly can. I mean, it was the same thing with Matt Soares, like when we first saw him, he, he had his phone sitting off to the side and it was a you know bad angle, but now look at him. I mean, he's always conscious of like, all right, I need to have my camera up. I mm -hmm. need to, you know, I have my setup. I'm using these guitars. Yeah. Like that's, that's a big part of it. And the one, like Justin said, once you get in that flow, you're, you know, it's unmatched. You can start thinking about, you can just be of, creative and interact yeah. with chat. Yeah. And I, still, and I like Logan said earlier, like I still monitor, uh, what's going on because little things can change somebody's volume could get bumped on something and so you have to like you know you don't want to get halfway through this there was one stream that we did that i was in and i actually did not monitor at first and when we got done i was like the reverb was all out of whack the entire night <laughs> because, I, because i never monitored the output i was just always on my own thing and i was like oh, i should have been listening to the thing so now i Pretty much always do that, and and I and you know what I figure <laughs> I think troubleshooting. I figure at some point it will I I will have it set up so that I know for a fact every I'll have I'll have pictures of where our pedals are at. Yeah, you know, and so that like if we need to do a checklist before we stream, we know that everything's gonna work how right. it needs to work. Right. Um, and then you can just even Prisca like you know one of the biggest challenges now is adding adding different keyboard sounds for Prisca because she's such an incredibly talented piano player and she hears stacks of voicings like one after another and to be able to have that sort of processing and being able to make it possible for her to be in the moment to just hit a button and it goes to what she wants to go yeah. that's the problems that we're kind of facing right now as we get better as Justin is starting to complete the sound scope of things you know so uh, so it's it, once again, it was like you're, to your point, there's always going to be something to do <laughs> with the stream. And once again, it makes you kind of be like, OK, well, today I'm going to tackle this problem because it's in my head right now in this moment. Um, yeah, yeah. really fucked my sleeping schedule up because <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of a night owl anyways, mm. naturally, like if left up to my own devices. Um, <laughs> but certainly like. I would get done with the stream and then I would start working on it. And it made more sense for me to like address it directly afterwards yeah. as opposed to like going to sleep and then waking up and then getting back on it. Like, mm. so I would just end up like Logan would wake up and I'd be like, what time is it? 10 AM. 
cool. Well, I got the microphones fixed. <laughs> and that and that was our dynamic for the longest time because once again, I you know I didn't really thrive in the technical side of it. Justin teaches me along the way, mm. and, and and it has grown my knowledge. But I, that's not my forte. Right. What I was doing when we were just a bar band was I was you know doing the trying to do the social media stuff and booking, booking the gifts, booking the gifts yeah. and taking care of all the stuff that required me to get up in the morning yeah. and so i'm that kind of person and that dynamic has made it balanced but there were definitely days where justin just it just seemed like he was doing so much work and now i'm able to thrive in these situations to where he's starting to feel more comfortable and we as a partnership can talk about moving forward with having the te- making it a television show making it marketable, making our fans feel welcome. Like these are the things that now we're getting to places to where we've grown sonically and we're moving into a different chapter of the the stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, and also, uh, you know, I I also want to talk about the camera setup because right now, (laughs) right now our our camera looks fantastic. I know. Um, (laughs) But, but as people who are in our stream know, our, our camera setup is pretty fucking good, mm. and I um, we have like four four different shots. So I, so I ended up going with a Sony mirrorless. I have we have two A sixty fours, and then we have A sixty four hundreds, and then we have uh, an A seven two S. Oh, the okay. two. Oh, just the two S. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I got the three S. A friend of mine's so, so. a, <laughs> a photographer, and he let us use. So this one's on loan. Yeah, it's on loan. Oh, so. it's not even <laughs> yours. Three <3S>. S. <laughs> uh, and he gave us like a good lens for it, but he saw. But so I was able to. Um, I have. I already had like a huge table for gaming, and I got like some other stuff like made. And I, I was like, we got to get multi monitor set up so we can both have chat up there. And this was all stuff I was kind of addressing, and and I found out how to take. Uh, TV, you know, monitor arms that were meant for TV, and then I was able to screw these little camera mounts onto them. And so I'm kind of fashion like all their camera mounts are just like kind of constructed by me. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's funny because I remember the day that he woke, like I woke up and he was about to go to bed. And he was like, "Dude, I found a YouTube video where this guy basically takes two different TV stand setups and melds them together and just throws away the rest of the pieces and mount these cameras." And it's for like 30 bucks or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're super cheap because they're like super mass produced. But if you were to buy something specific for a camera, because the market's so low, you're going to pay like four times as much. <laughs> so I was able to do this. And that's how they are right now. And I'm actually. Dude, the more, the more, the more then, thing is, is what's cracking then, me up right now. Like, and then we also got, I can't, you I can't really lift it up, but if we use it. the black mat or no, the, uh, the I, Atom. The, it's a black magic Atom mini pro uh-huh. for the different cameras. So, I have a I have the Elgato HD60 um, actual card that you like for a PCI card or whatever, mm-hmm. and that's what we were using it first with just the one camera, uh, and then I found this Atom Mini Pro, but it was on back order forever. But I got in on a list like super early, <laughs> I got like thirty. You were like I was like number 30. thirty, and we waited and waited and waited. It was like months later, yeah. and then magically it showed up it one day without even notice. Like it was just like. It's here. <laughs> and, and so I was able to ditch that. And that's how we were able to switch between our cameras because I ended up, I just spent $600 on video switch. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> thank you, credit cards. Uh, <laughs> right. And, uh, and so on now we that. And now, we're, and now I have more webcams coming. So, and now I'm even to the point where I'm ready to ditch these, yeah. get, get it off the table. And I want to set up a, like a rail system up top. Oh, uh, we, we have the... Our, Oh, it's so funny. Like when he was telling me, he was like, I think we need to hang everything from the ceiling. And I was like, I do too. Okay, bro. I'm, I'm with you, bro. I am yeah. with you. I, I could just picture my, like what I looked like at that moment too. Cause I was probably like, it was probably like noon and I was like still up and I'm probably looking like all cracked out. And I'm probably like, we have to hang everything from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> there is a valid point to it because we have we all have an issue. Even dog back there, like playing drums, the the floor shakes, and we have them we're set up stomping we're on stomping it. on the floor, you know, to keep time and things like that. And so Justin was like, "We're just getting this shakiness that can that can kind of we feel like it's throwing the audience off." So mm. we're sometimes you know, they like it though because when it gets intense, we start doing it and the camera's shaking, yes. but. <laughs> yeah, but I, I assume it's not great for everybody. So, and then also, 
to be able to um, get them off of the, the table because right now it's taking up like this much space in the back of the table and on the, on either side where they have to clamp on. So to me, like your table real estate at this point is like worth a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. It's like, it's like here. worth a lot. I actually bought, a, I bought the same exact table I had for gaming. I bought the one that just has six, six extra inches on it <laughs> because it makes a, a big difference to like for your workspace. Mm-hmm. Like, and so I have another four or five inches on the back of this that if I was to hang this up from the ceiling, I would get even more real estate. Oh. And that means a cleaner studio that's just, you know, you have more space for mm-hmm. stuff. We have like our iPads and things like that that we're reading the charts from yeah. and everything. All of that stuff, the controllers, they all sit here. My guitars lay up against, you know, the the, uh, the desk. So it's important to, like you said, to have that sort of real estate. You just don't know how much you're using until it's already gone. And we are just in a spare bedroom. So real estate is yeah, like... Import. Yeah, yeah. There's not a, there's not a whole lot. I had the so behind us is uh is the closet, and we had that shit packed with stuff, all odds and ends and speakers and stuff like that. And currently, all that stuff's in my room because <laughs> one day I was just like, "There's only one solution. We have to put dog in the closet." Yeah. <laughs> so and so I, and I had this. I had what so you can see right now. It's like a black curtain hung up behind it. Yeah. And then there's like lights kind of like flashing on and off uh, in the back. It looks really terrible in the potato yeah. camera, but <laughs> um, but you can see there's lights. So so I kind of had that vision for it before, and I was like, I want to make it look like it's space. Right. Like he's kind of his own little realm Hell back yeah. there that he kind of lives in. And so I found out a way to do that, uh, and that gave us so much more space. Yeah. yeah. To be able to, to just open up that closet mm-hmm. uh, and and do that. And I have like, you know, sound, I have soundproofing like all around that we didn't have before. I'm, you know, uh, it, it's a, it's, it's been a lot of fun for me to like put it together. And I, I'm even to the point now where I'm like, shit, I know so much about this now. I could start a YouTube channel about for it. For real. Well, I mean, uh, that's the thing. I mean, that's the thing that's interesting about people just going and, and putting up all these YouTube. To get to that point where you're to where you're making YouTube channels about it, you really do have to like have a master's in IT and shit, dude. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, insane. Like should, but, but I mean, if you're already making it and, and, it's, and it's paving a way, mm. why why not just be the consultant? You know what I mean? And yeah. you like, I mean, I, I go on YouTube and find things out about my car. Mm. You know what I mean? And those people aren't putting those videos together and asking you to like donate directly, but because they're generating content that is appropriate. It's the same reason why a lot of people like one of our um, one of our wonderful. Uh, uh, friend uh friends and uh amanda conda you know she does art she made the bobblehead that i have and the biscuit like little things that that we have and when she first started out it's like you can't you know if you're not into that it's gonna be difficult to watch six hours of it but people that are into art are loving it they just love their their it's funny because that this is another like twitch success story um (laughs) when i met amanda i was like oh we stream on twitch and she was like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And, and so uh, and so she got on Twitch and watched us. And she was like, oh, well, this is kind of cool. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, chat. And then she just got into it. And then I was like, you know, there's like a whole art thing. Because she was like, oh, I do some sculpture stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, dude, you should totally just like hook up a camera and like stream it. Start streaming your art stuff. And uh, and then I go into her her thing the other day, and she's got twenty five people watching her. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking a. You know I love that. that. I love that so much. When you come so back, cool. when you come back, and it's like numbers. That's how Matt was. Matt is yeah. like my friend in in real life. So like we know each other, and and so like when he first got started. You know, I, I was watching him too. He had his camera. It was like you couldn't even see his face barely. It's just like yeah. oh, pretty. He's just sitting there like singing and shit. Uh, and then I come back like two weeks later and there's like 40 people in there just fucking like bitting them. And people like are laughing at his jokes. They have inside jokes. I'm just like, what yeah. happened? Well, so, so it's funny because when we met Matt, like one of his first streams, like Logan was saying. And then uh, and then at a certain point, I was like, hey, dude, hit me up because I, I, I think I can help you uh, get, get your stream sounding and looking a little bit better, you know, for what you're doing, because I've already been through what you're doing. Mm. You know, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. that. 
so Matt and I ended up uh, FaceTiming each other for like three hours one night. Oh, shit. Oh, I, yeah, I remember because we were talking about it. He was like, he's going to call you as soon as we're done streaming. And so, <laughs> so the whole, like, Osseo Pro thing, like, I sat there with him and, like, I was like, okay, what you need is this. And then you're going to hook this up and then and they're going to do this. And I was like, I was, I was like, okay, is this working? Is this working? And we're, like, sitting there troubleshooting on his, on his PC. And, wow. and uh, we spent a long time, like, getting his, his stuff together yeah. because it, it's so much easier now that I have this knowledge then for him to just start from scratch and figure it out. Yeah. And he even was like, dude, I'm not a tech guy at all. Right. So he's like, I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. And I was like, that's cool, man. I got you. Yeah. Well, you were going to be up and running by the end of this thing for sure. Which, which says is, a lot, man, which says a lot. It says a lot about the community. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. I mean, because once again, there's no, to me, I'm just like, Dude, let's lift each other up, dude. Mm -hmm. And once again, I want to say thank you for reaching out to us, man, and having this podcast and being that you do these interviews that you're doing, man. Because once again, you're you're helping spread that sort of love, man. So thank you for oh like, man, you know, it's, it's my pleasure. I love talking to musicians about music and shit. That's it, it's yeah. easy for me. <laughs> yeah. It's just that the the podcast is is really weird because the podcast and the stream. They, they almost live on two separate they're just two separate entities and it kind of yeah. gave me this realization that twitch really is a is, is like the great equalizer right like you could have um like because my podcast does all right it's not the huge or anything it's not jre or whatever but like you know i do all right and i'll have a few thousand people download an episode but not one of those sons of bitches come over here and catch a stream you know what i'm right. saying <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the great equalizer and well, a for, lot of people don't know about twitch yet right yeah you know, and, but they, they will they will but they know they will but they, they definitely will. They will but they know about podcasts yes podcasts have you and, know what i'm saying and it's a thing that people do since since uh, i remember i was listening to podcasts on my ipad nano you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. like, we, Podcasts have, have had time to cultivate, mm -hmm. and people are like, "Oh, what podcast are you listening to?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a couple more years, it's going to be like, "Well, what what Twitch stream do you watch?" Right. Right. You know, it's going to be that for sure. For sure, I, I I absolutely feel that, and 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 it's like to me, there's nothing funnier than seeing fucking uh oh shit, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Uh, he, he's one. He's a huge rapper who came to Twitch. Is it Lil John? Is Lil John on? Oh no, T Pain. T Pain. T Pain. T -Pain. No. Nothing's funnier than seeing T Pain fucking freak out about drop frames. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's just like, no matter what you well, are or who you are, you're gonna have these tech issues that you're not gonna be able to deal with. And, or... that, and that's what makes this all so great. Right. That really levels the playing field it because does. I watch. I watch a lot of uh, streamers that uh, I watch Mike Shadona, mm. who is the other part of Lincoln Park. Okay, and he, and he does music production, songwriting uh, segments. He like he he's putting it together. He really understands it, um, but he's still only getting like maybe like a thousand people, you know. <laughs> and that and and once again, I mean, he has some success, so people know who he is. But right. really, like a thousand people to be watching you at that level of success. It's it's really leveling out right. the play. I mean, Halloween's got like almost 800 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, and um, and uh, autopilot has 500 any given time and stuff like that. And it's yeah, like shout out oh, to both of them, oh, man. They're so great, dude. Oh, both of those. Auto autopilot's like my favorite Twitch streamer. <laughs> dude, he's quickly becoming one of mine too because he he, um... he is he is. In fact, in fact, I have to say, uh, autopilot was probably the first music twitch streamer that i came across when i started looking into it and i was immediately like this is what we need this i was i was do. like whatever he's doing is like what I'm trying. <laughs> that's where i'm trying to be because he's had it but he's been on for he's been on twitch for a long time he's been making youtube videos for even longer mm -hmm. and he is just so fucking good at what he, he does incredibly mm -hmm. talented just a very incredibly talented um, what's up yeah, rafi thanks for stopping but, by buddy but, but you have people in famous bands that can't just like you can't just hop on Twitch and be be Twitch famous right. immediately. Yeah. You have you have to make your audience. You have yeah, to earn it, baby. I remember, you got to earn it. I remember uh, the Deftones were recording an album at like at the beginning of the pandemic, and they were still okay with just being in the studio together. And they were getting on Twitch and showing the live recordings, and they were still only pulling like five hundred people. Right. You know that freaking death tones you know what i mean like it's you know it, it's mind-blowing and also very 
very okay. Uh, one of the very first Twitch music streams that I watched was the lead singer. My girlfriend is a big fan of the Lumineers, mm -hmm. and the lead sing one of the lead singers of the Lumineers plays video games. Oh no! Shit. And so yeah, and so when the pandemic hit, he was like, "Oh, I really want to lift everybody's spirits, so I'm going to play a set." And when we watched his set, it was exactly like what Justin and I do. We're doing on a night to night basis. Couldn't remember the words. Kind of knew. Like he was doing cover songs. And, and that was the day that I realized that Twitch was a great opportunity for musicians because it really does make it possible for the people that are that are great songwriters and amazing talents and personalities. And it gives them the platform that they've always wanted. And it's, it's so incredible. Man. It really, really is. Yeah, it really, I agree. And, and it's funny because you can see people who um, maybe are at the more at the beginning of their musical journey. And so maybe they're not as versed and then maybe they don't have, you know, they haven't built up the chops in their vocals or in their playing. And mm -hmm. they're still able to to express themselves to a community that supports them, like, you know, who are just like, I just like you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I don't even care if you just started singing and playing guitar. If people just right. like you, they'll just hang out with you. That's huge, too, because I do see people who are like, oh, well, like obviously this person is an amateur mm -hmm. who who is just, you know, it's like, I know some songs of guitar, it's like right. playing guitar, and I'm just going to sit here and do it, and and yeah, you know, like they're they're not great singers, they're not great guitar players, and they have like 150 people watching it because they're just fucking cool people. Cool yeah. people. Yeah. And I, young young sub young sub three, so <laughs> so dope, man. Like he he is that guy is so down to earth, and he's he's, he's just really really nice dude. And he, I mean he's he's an amateur guitar player. Like you know he was just doing it for fun. He's a he's a sports announcer or something like that. He has a voice. <laughs> But yeah. he doesn't have anything to do right now, so he started twitching, and he's just like, "I just play guitar a little bit." Man, what a humble guy, dude! Like and anytime then, anybody subs to him, man, he, he just loses his mind. And, 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 and also, like, we also get to see, like, I've seen Young Sub from the first time I saw him to now, he's obviously better because way better because the the more you play, the fucking better you get. So right. you're, he's on a consistent level. He's so there you're, every you're week. watching people. You're watching people get better. It's like. Being on the journey with them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is. is which is which really speaks to what Twitch is, which is not just let me watch because anybody could, you know, say tape a live sh tape a show, put it up and people can watch it as like some sort of television show. But to be there with somebody live all the time, yeah. kind of just hanging out, there's a really it's 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 scratching that voyeurism itch uh, mm -hmm. that people are into and they're just as into that as they are into how good your music is right because they'd rather be there with you live and 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 be part of the world uh that you're that you're living in and you're especially and one thing and one thing with us i specifically was like i don't want this to be us in like a big rehearsal room with some cameras and we're standing there like we're like we're a band on stage right and i've seen some other smaller smaller groups or whatever who are on there and they're actually good bands and stuff like that but there's a disconnect mm. you know that you feel like with us I, I wanted to make it so that like you're in our spare bedroom yeah and we're sitting here with you we're not we're not like on a stage with a camera way off we're like hey twitch out there like we're up right. in the camera we're like hanging out with you right. that's that it's it's more fun Absolutely. for us it's more fun for everybody else um so you can't just you can't just <laughs> exactly <laughs> you can't just uh you can't just expect to put on the same live show that you would put on uh like on stage or something twitch is just a different different beast it is man it is and to to sit there and have people just hanging out with you and you're able to talk to them and like you were saying earlier where you're just there's not it's not the noise of the bar it's just this space it's this environment that you control completely well as much as your technology will let you but you know you have this very controlled space and it's just like 
the, it, the more you can bring them in with you, the more, the better it is. And, and you know, like glow stick, I, I love glow stick, Willie, but sometimes I feel like when I'm chatty, like it's just chatting into nothing, but they always right. have tons of people in there going crazy out there. And I'm right. not shit talking glow stick. I love those guys a lot. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, but you know, they have their green screen and they're set back and they're just shredding for hours. <laughs> But it's also but it's also not like that content doesn't work. Right. No, no, no. Exactly. Because they yeah. ha- their shit's full and, and, and it works for them. And that's the thing that people gotta understand coming into is is like you're building this environment that has to sort of work for you, but you're also working with your community to sort of build this world. It's mm-hmm. world building. I love and I love that concept of world building. Um, and, and, and you definitely get that here. And like, for me personally, being able to take the podcast, which is just this audio thing. And I had my fun with it. Like I would make stupid spoof songs and whatever, you know, and, and and just have fun with the medium. But like now there's this video aspect to it where it still pisses me off. God damn it. (laughs) I'm still working. I'm still working at like the whole video now. The whole video thing now is really driving me nuts. Like, not right this second, but like in general, it's just like I really want it to. Yeah, (laughs) potatoes. (laughs) I really want. Oh, and then sprinkles. Sorry, I didn't mean to miss that one. And don't forget the sprinkles. I don't know who the sprinkles are, (laughs) but but the yeah the it's it's just really cool to 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 see how you can develop. And, and how you can have your community help develop that and how you can sort of fuck it, it, it the interaction and obviously we like twitch do you guys uh are, do you guys find yourselves in a lot of other streamers chats or, or do you guys sort I, of... I so I try to when if I'm sitting around like working on something mm-hmm. uh because often that's what I'm doing right um, and because I have so many fucking screens now right. <laughs> why not right <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'll always like I'll try to like it's a lot of times if I can't be active in it, I don't just pull it up mm. necessarily because because I'm just like I, if I can't be involved, then I'm yeah, like, sometimes <laughs> lurking and sometimes like we want to be so involved and in lurking kind of, you know, hurts a little bit. We're just like, oh, let me say something. You know what I, I mean? Well, I'll just do it. I'm like, just do another stuff. And I, I kind of I want to be in it. But when I get a chance, I'll I'll be working and I'll open it up. And then I'm like, what's up, everybody? And then you go into these music these other music streams is like half of your chat is there yeah. <laughs> which is like what up everybody you know he's like to your friends like these are all my friends right uh and just like the fucking outshot yeah, over the here outshot. there's a there's a clip of me being like fuck yeah outshot wants this i fucking love the outshot let's go yeah and uh, we play you know we play a song uh <laughs> uh but that's how it is you feel like you know you miss people when they're gone yeah you're like you're like, well, where's this person at? Like, <laughs> yeah, we've had, a, we've had a couple of times where after the stream was like, well, we didn't see this person. And I'm like, I'm, really, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm like, I'm going to message him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel about wallace one of my mods i haven't seen him in like a week and i was like really like concerned about it. i was like what's is wallace okay like i just want to make sure my buddy is okay. like fr- friend yeah. are you there <laughs> and then, then you almost feel bad too like i almost feel bad missing people's streams like you know like especially people you like especially if you're active in their community it's like man he's like it's just it's eight o'clock at night and you're just like oh just i can't do it right now i, I just well, the fantastic classics really like hit on hit it, the nail on the head when they were talking about how they would go into other people's chats and you kind of have to do that. Mm-hmm. But once again, there's a there's a just like with any success or any sort of like growth, you know, even in like the real world, you eventually get to a place to where you have to kind of that you you're just going to be distant friends. But we but we enjoyed the path along the way. There was a channel, uh, Dylan Cottle Music. And, you know, we were watching her the first couple of times and, and we miss her to death. Like we, we try to pop in, but, you know, there's so many more people that are on here that are doing their thing. We want to show them love and welcome right. them into the community. So like rating them all the time is like, you know, we, we appreciate the raids that we got from Halocene and from the Fantastic Plastics. But, you know, do we expect it anymore? No, because everybody's coming up. Everybody's trying to get a little piece of this. Share, you know? share the wealth. Yeah. Share, and, then, share. and then also with us, like, you know, there's there's some of it where you're like, well, I would like to raid somebody who's doing really well because then they might raid us. Right. So you, <laughs> There so, is some politics. So you're you're, you're yeah. looking for some of that. But yeah. then I usually find myself at the end of the night being like, 
let's find somebody with four people mm-hmm. and, and let's blow their minds. And, and then blow their fucking minds. <laughs> like, because that's more, I, that's just so cool to do because I know how that feels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when somebody who's sitting there with four people gets rated with 50 people, you're like, this is fucking great. Yeah. You know, you feel so good about it. And it just to like share that love is. I was, uh, I was watching, uh, a, a streamer the other night, Lily Z and I, cause she's rated us with like over a hundred people or whatever. And she had just started her stream. She's in Australia. And, uh, I think the band is called Avenatti mm. and Avenatti had, uh, like 500 people watching them. And I just happened to be kind of bouncing around and heard them say that they were about to raid Lily Z. And she literally had like 20 people watching her. And then all of a sudden, 500 folks. And she was able to keep like 350 of them. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so those moments, those moments on Twitch are what really makes it a selling point to the excitement. and But also just to the fucking community, man. It's yeah. so dope. It, it really is great. No, I, I feel you, man. And and like I, I feel like that's such a disconnect from like in real life music scene. Like not always, but like fucking uh, but I don't know, you guys were in the real life music scene. How often was it that like your like friends or or just acquaintances bands um get their, their audience and like, hey, audience, we're all gonna go and, and, and have fun at the at the Risky Biscuit show tonight. Come right, on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> or, or how many yeah. times were they gonna be there like shouting you out or, or being happy for you or, or you know, like all these positive things. I feel like a lot of that's missing from the real music industry. That was, that was, it was because the bar, people at the bar, they're, they're there to spend money at the bar. They're right. not there for the music. They're there for yeah. the drinks and the, and the escape from their regular lives like yeah. that. But these people are like, you know, when you're on Twitch watching it, yeah, some people might be out there having a cocktail and enjoying it. And we, we appreciate that. But it doesn't, it doesn't put that like barrier between you and the, the audience because the audience isn't just there. This audience isn't here to get hammered and watch us. They're here to watch us. And that's great. That was, that was, uh, I would say probably like maybe six or seven years ago uh, when, when I was in, you know, pretty heavy in Stokeswood. Uh, and there were a couple other local original bands around and we would all play shows, but you would find that sometimes two, two bands who had, who shared some of the same audience were um, playing on the same night Mm -hmm. somewhere. And I'm like, it just doesn't make sense. There's, there's enough days to go around. And so there was a time when I tried to get all these other bands, it it never worked because it's like herding cats, obviously, (laughs) but like, um, there was a time when I tried to get a joint Google calendar going um, for, you know, 15, 20 bands around town mm. where we could all be like, before we booked a gig, let's see if anybody else that we would, you know, be sharing fans with or whatever has already got a gig booked. And if they're not, then if they if they're already booked, then we would book it for a couple of days later so that we could like work together mm-hmm. to like you know, like not take away from each other or, Hey, you have, can we get on this date with you and we could co headline it or open up for you or whatever and kind of work together. But it's, it's where on Twitch that just happens naturally. You're like, you're like, um, you know, I'm actually thinking about like when we started doing this, I'm like, well, are we going up against somebody that I really love that I would like to, you know, not go up against (laughs) or, or can we start at the end of when somebody else who we love might, be done mm. uh, or, or just finishing or or when we end who can, who are who are we always able to like you know throw stuff over to yeah uh, and so that's just it's kind of built into twitch right once again the gaming community kind of set the standards for that too which is which is funny you know like i remember watching we watch we, we remember watching some people who some when when like uh you know ninja got really big and stuff like that and, and all of a sudden he has you know, 200,000 people watching him, <laughs> Jesus. you know, but this is for real. Like yeah. the guy just had 200,000 people watching him. He's right. making millions of dollars <laughs> just, just on Twitch, just right. doing his thing. And when he would go raid a, uh, a smaller streamer the person would have like 60 people <laughs> and he'd throw like 90,000 people at him. You know, uh, and, and it was just built into Twitch. Yeah. And those Again, videos, I've, I've seen those classic, like, video, like, those classic raids of the videos yeah. where people, ah, 
It's just it's huge. We, we, there's probably some clips of us. I, mean, I remember the night that Hallocene raided us, and we were just like, I was like, I've never seen 500 people before. Like, I, I, I'm like all at once like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. A lot of those people ended up becoming fans of ours, and we, and we once again, like, I really appreciate oh, yeah. every one of them that like stuck around and and appreciate what we were doing because once again, I mean, it was like what you said about Glow Stick Willie. They're they're probably one of the only other bands we've seen a couple of handful here and there, but they're they're the they're the only ones that we've actually like seen as a full band, and it makes us feel good that, 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 uh, to to you know just to just to be monumental in that aspect you know because because it's a big deal to be able to like have five of us on twitch each one of us having our own voice i mean dog is fucking hilarious dude and for the chat to be able to don't talk him up like that i'll he's talk a, that much he's already got he's already got a big enough head <laughs> i mean like physically he's got yeah, a big head. he's <laughs> got a big head he's a <laughs> short man giant head you know Whispering, his head is like half of his body. Whispering um, glitter. I would have asked that that you, I would have asked that uh, that that um, that whatever the fuck those are called. Oh my god, what is that? A riddle. I would have asked that riddle, but you guys already answered it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not. I can't answer. But thank you for thank you for the AMA, whispering glitter. I'm sorry. What were you gonna say, Justin? <laughs> Ask me anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, well, we've been yeah. we've been going at it here for about three and a half hours. Yeah, uh, I was I was actually about to say I was I was gonna say you say you're not uh, JRE, but we pretty much just like threw down like on a full episode of JRE. Justin and I are really enjoy talking anyway. So, well, yeah. you know, I, I I appreciate that you guys made things very easy for me. Uh, I I appreciate guests who just are like can talk and. Because, you know, when you're, when you're talking to people and, and they're just answering with yes or no questions. When you have to pull it out of them. Oh, yeah. God. It's just, it's, it's like, like all right. <laughs> yeah, no, all right. Yeah. And those yeah, are usually but... the really quick ones. Those are the ones that last for about half an hour. And I'm just like, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> have yeah. a good day. Yeah. I, have yeah, I, don't have, I, don't, I don't have that fucking... People are like, you know, Justin, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, so you guys... so. Are you then thinking that IRL gigging is kind of fading further and further from? Well, it's like it's kind of like earlier when you were like, "What's going to happen after the pandemic?" And I'm like, "When is the end of the pandemic?" Like, I'm... we're in Georgia; it's a hotbed of pandemic. This yeah, there's a and, there's a lot of different no... political views about it all right now. So yeah, especially it's in like... Atlanta, right, or at least in the South. Uh, yeah. Well, Atlanta's awesome. And yeah. like the city, the of, city Atlanta, of Atlanta is oh, yeah, it's good. Georgia is like some fucking redneck bullshit. <laughs> it's like people are like, my, my, my liberties. And I'm like, please wear a mask, asshole. I mean, um, once again, I'm trying I mean, to get back to work here. <laughs> Justin, uh, like, I was playing a lot of gigs that were out in some of the outskirt towns. And, and when I go back and see their like social media posts and stuff of them all hanging out, like, like nothing's going on. I'm like, I mean, once again, it is a small town, yeah. but even like if we, they're like, Oh, why don't you come out here and play? It's like, well, we're coming from like a serious place. A lot of people. So oh. no, we don't want to put you at risk. Like, well, yeah. and also this whole thing is kind of <laughs> this whole thing for me, because I'm like, actually am politically active and like super, super liberal and shit like that mm -hmm. in the middle of the south and always have been for like a for like a really long time yeah uh, it's made me even more like uh there's some even like people and venues that i was playing that i'm like you know what actually fuck those people mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah no I, I, like, I'm, I, I, I'm not worried about like losing fans i'm not worried about any of that because at the end of the day like you know you gotta stick up for something at some point it's not just about like well, let's just rope in as many people as we can and not worry about it. Like, because you know, that was an old mentality. You, you know have to mean? have it some is. kind of like responsibility also for being like a voice of positive change in your community. Uh, and so, and I've always respected artists that do use that platform. Some people are like, artists just talk, you know, just play music and shut the fuck up. But like, some of my favorite artists are like the most politically active 
uh, and just outspoken people. Yeah, at, rage, at, rage like, against the machine, man. Yeah, rage against the machine. And, I, and I, I've always appreciated that. So uh, for me, it's kind of made me be like, I don't really give a shit. I, this is how I feel. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and if you're on board, let's party. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I feel you, man. Because uh, I, you know, and, and when people have that thing where like artists should just play or artists should just art and fucking shut the fuck up, it's like art is like part of the basis of art is a comment on culture. Oh, yeah. of course. And yeah. you are fucking commentating and also leading mm-hmm. the way in culture. Yeah. So why the fuck wouldn't we have something to say about it, bitch? Dude, I'm like, like, fuck I'm like, you. Art is literally just saying stuff. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> later, Alshot. Yeah, I'm later, not, man. I was just typing not, that. But later, Alshot. Thanks for stopping really, by, buddy. It's just like, if you look at um, provocative paintings Mm. you know uh if you look at um film and television that is like uh that is like they all have messages but basically you know uh, even our whole system of ethics are just stories and narratives that we all tell each other about like what could go bad if 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 we did this and we tell each other stories about it and the the artists and and comedians comedians are like the biggest Mm -hmm. like how big was bill hicks right in, in in, in telling it like and like and George Carlin and that kind of comedy is like serious political commentary, yep. but using humor to because if you don't laugh you cry right. you know and right. so and so these are the people that are inspirational and these are the people that do affect social change and 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 uh, you know global consciousness For and sure, really man. change culture and um, music has always been a huge part of that since day one, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, of making big statements and getting these statements out to a lot of people. And so I appreciate all that. And, uh, and, and also Georgia kind of sucks a little bit. I mean, we, we feel, (laughs) I I feel really bad about some of my friends that have had to resort to going back to the old ways. I mean, some of the, some of the musicians down here, they don't really care, you know, because there, there are a lot of patios and things like that. Mm -hmm. that but you just have a sentiment here in the South about, you know, the distance. And once again, I mean, we were able to play on our front porch right. without any problem. Like the cops didn't come, you know what I mean? And if they did, they, they weren't really important. Even like, like you said, the law enforcement over here, is not being super strict? It's almost like a self-policing sort of thing. Mm. And really Southern people would just rather give you the stink eye than fucking, you know, you know, tell you what the fuck is wrong with you. You know what I mean? Like, right, it, right. So, so yeah, there, there's just a, there's always going to be a clash in culture, which is the reason why we're enjoying Twitch is because we, we can stay inside and not have to fucking deal with that shit. You know? <laughs> right? No, for well, real. I mean, for real. Even some of the even some of the gigs that we've uh, had been offered, there's just not enough money for you know what we're what we're cultivating here. You know, because this is more, much more of a fulfillment than I than know. having to suck your soul. You know? Yeah, I do, I do, and and then you know, I. I I think you guys mentioned something at the beginning, but like you were saying how it's given, it's almost given you more of what you want out of music, of, of more of what you were going for in the first place when we started playing music. Then, well, yeah, people who are attentive to what you're doing right. and respect what as, you're doing, as opposed yeah. to just it being a passive, mm-hmm. uh, I'm here, I'm here drinking or eating dinner and yeah. you're just there in the fucking background. Yeah. And you're just ruining my conversation because you're playing too loud. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Fuck it. Happens. Yeah, that happens so many oh, times. Oh, yeah. When you're just playing, like, the whole room could be full of people and it could just still just suck the life out of you because no one is paying dude, attention. When this and... bit was playing our normal gig, we were loud as shit. Dude. <laughs> so loud. You, you didn't have a you, choice. You couldn't avoid us. But we actually, people knew, it was more of an industry bar, too, so people would kind of show up late and they were all um, industry people, so they're getting hammered and stuff. Was, <laughs> we'd, we'd have great shows. Oh man, there was some. There was one night where we closed the night with Nutshell by. Don't tell me Whispering Glitter. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, you're fine. By Alice in Chains, uh-huh. and, and it's the slowest tune. But we had like people dancing like it was a fucking like high school dance, and they were ways to fucking ways just like swaying back and forth to Nutshell. <laughs> <out there. laughs> Oh, hammered. I mean, and we were up there getting hammered too. Like we were encouraging <laughs> that aspect. But we eventually started bringing. We would have to, the, the bar would be like, all right, well, you drank an entire bottle of <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're like, you owe us $200. Yeah. Oh. And they're like, uh, and they were like well, don't forget the server. And it's like, yeah, we appreciate the server, like being there and working for it, bringing us the shots and everything. 
But like we know that every time we took a shot, somebody out there was like, "I'll take a shot with that band." Hell yeah! <laughs> um, I think it did encourage the purchasing of them. So. Okay, we're gonna answer uh, Whispering Glitters. Um, so why don't we do this? Because I wasn't able to prepare um, any games today. So why don't we do? Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, what's a different word for piano? Keyboard? Wait, a minute, are you giving the answer? Hold on. Okay, so let's, let me read the riddle. I have keys but no locks and space and no rooms. You can enter but you can't go outside. What am I? Oh, and I see. What's a different keyboard? Okay, I already answered. Never mind. There's no games today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is a keyboard. Okay. Give it a <laughs> Well, usually we play how much does it cost on Craigslist, but I completely just spaced it. And it's... You just do like a Price is Right kind of thing? Exactly. And and I have patches from our sponsor and... I, I Remember, wish... spay new to your pets. Yeah. Spay new to your pets. Well, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, then I think that I, I'm going to let you guys go because we, we're yeah. going, and uh, I'm sure you guys got a life to live. And Well, we have to stream in a few hours. So yeah, yes. we're, we're actually going live tonight. So Hell, yeah, yes. Yeah. What time are you we, guys we, going on? Uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time. 9 o'clock. So anybody in chat, make sure. Uh, Mod, can you give me a shout-out for the guys? Or I can, I guess. I don't know. I'll just do it. <laughs> she do it. We've already made it this far. <laughs> oh, will, will be one still on? Okay, we'll raid. We'll be one. All right, guys. Well, thank you All so right. much for coming Thanks, on the show. And um, I'll probably be in your stream sometime tonight. If not, I'm sorry. I'll feel guilty for it. But I might get high and be like, oh, I can't do anything right now. Dude, dude. Do your thing, man. Hey, man. Yeah, it's all good. We just appreciate the opportunity to talk, man. Oh, and, thanks, and it's, Gio. It's wonderful Jim. hanging out with you, man. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, absolutely. You guys are fucking awesome. And, and you guys just have a great vibe to you anyways. And um, and everybody in the band is a character. So it's nice. That is true. That it's is. nice to be there. Geo Jim, thanks for hanging out, man. I really appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, yeah, thanks to your chat was really cool too. Yeah, yeah this whole oh. this whole thing is great. Keep up the good work, man. I'm gonna, really, you're doing I'm gonna a great keep job. going. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna see what happens. And like I said, you get I get a few thousand downloads, but none of those cocksuckers want to come over here and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll, it'll start to translate. Yeah, man. It, well, that's the that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to bring it all together because we speak English good kind of branches out in a bunch of different weird aspects. So like I'm trying to have a place where it all sort of meets in the middle. So we'll see. But all yeah. right, guys. Well, have a good night right. and Thank fucking you. have a great stream. And yeah. I will see you out there. Absolutely. Later, my friend. All right. Peace out. Peace. All right. Let us go back to the main. Rush. Boom.